the Ice Plex. It's a great feeling to be back after such a great season from the Ice Pack last season. A lot of turnover this year, but how did the, how did the Ice Pack really keep this train rolling from last season, keep this momentum going? Well, with keeping the co same coach, keeping, keeping the same strategy, and uh, having a player of the year, Riley Johnson, uh, coming in, you know, I think working and building off of him still with the loss of Sam Bash Winnitz is, I'm sorry, um, is going to be kind of tough because he was a big factor. He was one of the big point scorers for the ice hockey um, team. So just seeing how they play this year and with a good eye opener against ECU, it's going to be good. Of course, coming off that huge 14 to 1 win over Duke last weekend, M newcomer Solomon scoring a hat trick alongside Lath Jadala returning this season. The Ice Packer off to a hot start. On the other side, the ECU Pirates are coming off a, a bad season, per se. Not necessarily a bad one, but a lost one. One they definitely wish they could have done a little bit better at. How do they turn things around in this season? This is their season opener against a really strong ice pack team. What do they do here? I think it starts with keeping the puck out of the back of the net. As simple as it sounds, last year they had a negative goal differential, so good goaltending is going to be a key for them to get off to a hot start. Also, with some new captaincy in the locker room, it looks to see where new leadership is going to come from because it didn't seem to be too unified last year. So maybe this new leadership will spark some sort of chemistry for this team. Well, this will certainly be a game to watch. Welcome back to Ice Pack Hockey. We'll be right back for puck drop after this. Starting lineups being announced here out at the Iceplex. As we now have your Ice Pack starting lineup being announced right now. Stepping forward, Leith Jadala at the left forward position, a returner from last season, second on the team in scores behind the legendary Sam Vanishevitz. Starting at the center position, Nikita Anastratov, the big Russian rocket. And then Chris Solomon, the newcomer, who scored a hat trick in his first win against Duke with the ice pack at that right wing position. Starting at left defense, Cam Mazakowski. And at the other defender, Victor Hugo. And your starting goalie tonight, Ian Hutchison. Both teams are stepping up now. We're going to have the national anthem in a second. Hockey is coming up right now. And welcome back. National Anthem is done here at the Iceplex. It's time for some hockey. The Ice Pack taking on the ECU Pirates. Ice Pack coming into this one. One game under their belt already. A 14 to 1 blowout of Duke. What'd you really think about that one, Will? Uh, it, was, it was a really good game, actually. Um, seeing that the Ice Pack puts up 14 against Duke with only letting one in the net, uh, it was really nice. I don't specifically know about Ian Hutchinson's save count, but I'm predicting that it was really well. Angus. The ECU Pirates, this is their season opener here. How did they get the ball rolling? I know you already talked about their goaltending needing to start strong here in this one. But against an NC State team that's already rolling in this young season, what do the Pirates need to do to stop them right in their tracks? Yeah, well, the key is a good start. It all starts right off the hop. they got to get on them early and kind of stay down on them, play their game, not kind of give in to the other team's style, and we'll see what they can come out with. As we always talk about, getting that first goal in the first 10 minutes of the period can be so crucial to momentum as these two teams are preparing to line up. Taking the face off for the ice pack will be number eight, Nikita Anastratov, that big bodied Russian center. He's done a great job out there. Ever since really joining the ice pack last season, he was a fixture of that starting lineup. And he will be facing off against the captain for ECU, Nicholas. Diogo Antonio, and I apologize sincerely if I messed that name up. 
There we are. ECU Pirates getting that one off very quickly. Trying to slip that one ahead. Good defensive check there. Anastradov taking it up, passing it ahead to Jadala. Back Anastradov to Anastradov. Oh. Taken away by ECU. Good job there. It was a good hop out for NC State, but a great job by the ECU Pirates to disrupt them. Great recovery there from NC State to get that puck back after that play. Uh, it's moving down the That puck skips ahead. They will not call icing. Icing is waved off there. Wow. ECU just kind of trying to slow it down, trying to find some avenue to get through there. Passing it ahead. Yeah, it seems tonight that they're going to be playing through Nicholas a lot. I mean, coming back last year from 18 games played with eight goals, eight assists. He's their leading score, leading point scorer right now for the team. Um, close behind him is Mason McCannon with 15 games played, seven goals, five assists. Let's we'll see what they do tonight. Kind of a sloppy start off the hop. Uh, puck's kind of bouncing around a bit. Here we got Hugo coming out on the left wing. Takes a shot. That'll be snared off the blocker and fanned on by Johnson. And that was just a great save by Graham Emmett there. Again, Johnson had an opportunity there, and he often makes good on those chances. Johnson again has the puck. He's going to take a shot, and Emmett saves it once again. Wow. Ice Packer getting shots. Riley Johnson with two shots there, but nothing doing. Graham Emmett saving both of them. Yeah, Graham Emmett having uh, saves, 179 saves from last season. A fixture returning to the net on this Pirates team this season. So we'll have a faceoff over in ECU ice. One's going to be won by ECU as they take the puck, trying to move it around. Passing it forward. Good disruption by the ice pack here. So Angus, so far, what are your thoughts on the ice pack's offense? Ice pack's offense is looking good. They seem to have a lot of time possession in the ECU zone, but it, it looked for them to sustain some of that pressure going forward and create a, a good offensive cycle here. Devin Halco collects it back. Skipped ahead towards the middle. Nothing doing oh. for the Pirates there. They try to collect it. What a move. Good move there by Alex Robinson oh. as he takes a hard hit there. We know. see the referee's hand come up. Ice Pack are going to try to do something here as ECU gets it. Another check right there, there up against go. the glass. Yep. And that is going to be penalty cross check, I believe. That is the call. Yeah, one of the new areas of emphasis here in the ACCHL is finishing high with the hand. So that one was just a little bit too up high for the officials liking. As we see going to the penalty box for the Pirates. Didn't get to see a number there. Yep. Being sent off for a two-minute minor there. Ice Pack are going to have the power play, going to have an early advantage here. Again, that lethal offense. Justin Hess being sent off for the Pirates. He's going to be serving two minutes for that cross-checking penalty as Anastradov wins that one, but the Pirates get it back immediately. Oh, man. Collected by the defense of the Ice Pack. See, what's good to see is just the the calmness in NC State's defense back there, just sending it back and being able to move it around without having the pressure from uh, ECU's offense pushing at him. And Ian Hutchison hasn't had any challenges so far. He's been doing a good job back there in net, but nothing really coming his way yet. As Leif Jadala takes it ahead, great stop there defensively for the Pirates. Had an open shot, but just nothing doing as Devin Halko collects it. Passes it over to Parker Zarek. That one is oh. off the side of the net. Leif Jadala has the puck behind. Going to pass it out right there. It seems like Ian O'Rourke is starting to park the bus. Ice Pack trying to make something oh. happen, and they and score! Number 27, Chris Solomon continues his hot start for the Ice Pack, scoring his fourth goal in two games. Yeah, yeah really good work there, getting into the dirty area, looking, picking up some loose change and tucking it up high. Chris, two, two minutes, 40 seconds, Chris already put one in the back of the net. Chris Solomon. Good for him. Yeah, very much so. Chris Solomon, again, off to that hot start. Had a, had a hat trick in his first game on the Ice Pack. Really looks to be a key contributor to the Ice Pack this season. Yeah, exactly the start the Ice Pack were looking for and the complete opposite for the ECU Pirates and see how they rebound here. Looks like we have Matt Miller and Kenny coming on. Good poke away by the Pirates there. Trying to make something happen. This is the deepest they've been into Ice Pack territory so far tonight. See what they're doing. They're trying to move it around, get it out, but NC State's playing great defense. Ox Fisher moving it around behind the net. That's poked away again by the Ice Pack. They're getting a breakaway chance here. As Ryan Kenny, the captain, comes through behind the net, gets a hard check. Good job there by the ECU defense, taking that away. Ice Pack maintained possession, passing it around. Matt Miller plays it in. Oh. Plays it back, sorry. Ice Pack again, have a chance behind the net. 
trying to find that lane to get through towards the middle, but nothing doing. The Pirates' defense has done stellar work here today, giving up that one early goal. Oh. Goalie lost track of that one there as Emmett just couldn't find it. That one tries to get tipped in there, but nothing doing. ECU survives. A good attempt by the Pirates. Yeah, really good pressure the there by the ice pack. Ian Hutchison falls on top of it. His first save of the night. First action we've really seen out of him tonight. The ice pack defense has been stellar so far, really keeping them away. Angus, what have you been seeing that you like out of the defense? Uh, out of the defense for NC State, what I really like is the puck movement. Uh, starting from the breakout in the offensive zone, working it down the sides and giving the fours good opportunities to come down the sides. And while ECU hasn't been slouching either, defense has denied some key opportunities for the ice pack. What have you liked out of the Pirates so far? So far, they've played really good defense. Um, I do like the way that they are kind of playing around the net, uh, saving their goalkeeper a little bit by getting that puck out of there, uh, playing so closely tight, but also playing man. It seems that they're working, uh, I guess you could say, like a zonal win man. And that one is chipped ahead by Cam Gross trying to make things happen, but is taken away by the ice pack again, trying to get an opportunity. It seems Pirate. like I, oh, sorry, I apologize there. Pirates just keep chipping it ahead. Ice pack again, Owen Drugan has the puck and that one's going to be called for icing. So we have a stoppage here. And this has really been a back and forth battle as much as the score is one to zero right now. That early goal from Chris Solomon for the ice pack, putting them up early. This really has been back and forth. ECU has had a couple opportunities down there, but their offense just hasn't been able to break through the Ice Pack's defense so far. They're yeah. trying to chip away, really, and they just haven't found a way through. Yeah, it's going to be important for ECU to find some sort of sustained pressure because all of their opportunities have kind of come on the rush, but they haven't been able to work their umbrella cycle. Mazakowski pulling that one away. Owen Drugan tips it ahead Todd to Eric it. Todd. Todd passes it ahead. And Riley Johnson with a shot, but that one just goes high. I believe that was deflected by Graham Emmett. Sorry, Joey Davidson, I believe that was. That one is going to be called right there. I believe they're going to get him. Oh, man. Joey Davidson be sent to the box. Joey Davidson getting sent to the box there. I believe they got him for tripping, using that stick to really just pull his opponent's legs out from under him. Yeah, yeah. this is the, uh, the kind of opportunity ECU needs to claw their way back into this game. A power play goal for the Ice Pack early in that one. ECU has a similar opportunity right now. The Ice Pack were stellar on defense last season, as we saw all season long against the power play. Their penalty kills were spectacular all season long. But we'll see how they do this season. Everything has changed. They did lose a bunch of key players from last year. They only have, I believe it is, a nine returning from last year's team. So That one's pushed ahead. Quick on the penalty kill. They had an opportunity to get the goal while a player down. But that one is pushed ahead by number eight, Mason McMahon. Denied by the defense. Just going to be taken away. Slipping up on that one, Ian O'Rourke. You see, unable to retain position. You see trying to reset, but Parker Zark did a really good job of keeping him pinned back in their own zone. Using that speed that we saw when he won the skills competition for fastest skater last season in the ACCHL. That was going to be passed yeah, ahead to the middle, number 16. Justin, Justin Hess. Hess trying to get that one going. ECU again, as I said, trying to chip away at this one, but unable to find any lanes. Yeah, the power play seems to be sloppy thus far, not able to get the puck really anywhere near an ice pack territory. They've been kind of reeling on their heels for this power play. Hutchison again falls on top of it. Hasn't been tested too much here. The defense has held strong even while a man down. The Pirates have to get this momentum swung quickly because if they allow this to continue, they're going to find themselves down. Christopher DePono from ECU with that shot at Hutchinson. Justin Hess going to be taking this one for the Pirates. This face off. That one's going to be won by Miller. Matt Miller for the ice pack. Seems that one got caught up on the net. Pass the head. Good defense by the ice pack again as they just chip this one back behind the defenders. The high stick is waved off there. Matt Miller pushing forward just to try to block that. Oh. And collision sends everybody flying into the net. And it looks like they're going to, not sure quite what they're motioning for. It looks like the Pirates are celebrating a goal, but I think the referees are calling a cross check there. I'm not sure. That looked like ECU's player and ours went flying into the net back there. Both of them sent flying. It looks like 
Yeah, NC State's about to go a man down. I think uh, the top in front of them, the odd man rush, created an interference penalty. So it looks like ECU's about to go to work on a five on three. And that will be what is happening here. Ryan Kenny sends the box as well on that play. An opportunity that the Pirates can't let pass up here. When you're up five to three, what does that really mean for your hockey team, I guess? Well, so they got 45 seconds left on the five on three, so they're going to have a lot of space to work with in the offensive zone. So it all starts with the face off. They're going to need to get possession off the draw and see if they can work some sort of cycle to really put the ice pack on their heels. The Pirates have a prime opportunity. Again, just chipping away. They've slowly been earning more possession time in ice pack territory, but still unable to do anything with it here so far. As the Pirates come away with that one, number 14, Hudson Schaefer comes away with it. Yeah, ECU working along the half wall right now, fans on a pass, and back to the D, but a point snap pass across, and that one's blocked, and it looked like the ice pack will be able to chance to tie it up along the boards and kill some more time. See, what ECU's really got to do it now is just try to space out the pack as much as they can, but it seems like they're trying to force it at this point. NC State doing a really good job right now on the kill, and they're able to get that one down the ice, which should about rub out the first penalty. They're going to have one more push at it with just three men on the ice. About 10 seconds left here for the Pirates on that 5-3 to three advantage. They're trying to make something happen here. You can see a little bit of urgency in their play, but that one is chipped away and up into the net with one second remaining on that penalty, 5-3. to three. They're going to miss out on that opportunity. They still have a chance for a power play goal, though. Joey Davidson's going to come rushing out of that box as soon as that second's up there. You know he will be coming oh, yes. right out, trying to make a difference here. Ice Pack need all the help they can get and trying to maintain this 1-0 lead. Right there. It seems East, to be Eric Todd, I believe. ECU is nope. going to leave one man back just in case Ice Pack wins this draw and can spring a man out. And that's a great shot from ECU. Just ricochet that one right past Ian Hutchison into the net. Great, fantastic opportunity. They made the most of that one second where he was coming back onto the ice. They just couldn't do anything there, couldn't react in time, and a great play by the Pirates to even this game up. Yeah, no real chance for Ian Hutchinson right there. He was kind of left out to dry with a, with a cross-ice pass, and he's not able to go post-to-post -post quick enough, and that one kind of sails over his right blocking side into the upper corner of the net. That was, a, that was one rocket of a shot there, I would say. Very, Very much so. Accurate. Pirates found a seam in that defense and exploited it perfectly, equalizing this game at one all with about 13 minutes and 18 seconds remaining here in this first period. Let's see, we have Parker Shurik, Sarik up. That one's going to be batted around, going to be won by the Pirates eventually there. Kind of ricocheted around a bunch of players taking a shot at that one. Parker Sarik again with that breakaway speed, getting to the puck quickly, beating everybody else back there. Makes a man miss, crosses across to the middle, and a great I save by Emmett. Save. Yeah, a really good save there, getting out on top of the crease, taking away the shooting angle. Emmett just has played very well here. A lot of chances, a lot of shots on goal for the Ice Pack. But Emmett has played his heart out. He's done a great job and saved a bunch of crucial opportunities. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how NC State responds here facing their first adversity this season. Especially Emmett's first game back after the year. Played eight games, won, won five, lost, or sorry, won one, lost five. My apologies. He had 41 goals scored against him. He might have had some decent training over the offseason. Parker Zarek ricochets that one out there too, but again, Graham Emmett just snatching that one out of the air. He's looked on fire here in this last couple minutes. Yeah, he looks really comfortable right now with the glove. He's kind of windmilling on that save, kind of showing off a little bit. Very much so, and you can hear the Pirates bench reacting to that one. They always love when their goalie can get an impressive save like that. Oh yeah. Pack wins that one, sends it flying over the net. That one's going to be taken quickly there. They're sits going to maintain across, possession. Sits back across the ring. Alex Robinson has it out in the corner, manages to chip it backwards. Riley Johnson takes a shot. Nothing doing there. I believe Emmett got a glove on it yet again. He has been active here in this period. Dominant there. ECU comes away with it, but Ian O'Rourke just chips it away, but not giving up on the play. Mason McMahon continuing to press that one. Alex Robinson has it out in space. One on three. Three Pirates back there defending. Ice Packer taking a chance for a line change here. Robinson knocked to the ice. Big hit there for the Pirates. Good save by Christopher Graham Emmett. Slow shot there by Zarek. Just unable to get it past Emmett. A little too slow there. Robinson tries to get that, but it's off the defender for the Pirates. Yeah, Ice Pack really hemming ECU right now. Back on their heels with a lot of sustained zone pressure. 
working behind the net right now, looking for some space. Uses the cage as a little bit of protection. He's wheeling right now at the top of the crease. Looks to uh, slide it over. The ice pack trying to make something happen here. Devin Halco crosses to the middle, unable to get that one to go, but they retain possession here. Halco's got a shooting lane at the top of the crease. He throws one on net. There's nothing happening there. Lace Jadalo seemed to lose the puck there for a second. Halco chips it back, and they're going to have to bring that one back around. Devin Halco has the puck. He chips that one back ahead to Chris Solomon. Solomon already has one goal in this game already. He's trying to make something happen. He's crossing to the middle. He shoots, and, and he scores score. again. Chris Solomon with the second goal of the night for the Ice Pack. Both scored by him, really just making that one happen all by himself. A great tip ahead by Devin Halco right to the waiting arms of Chris Solomon, who made that shot look easy as he just sliced through the defense. Yeah, he's really hot right now. He kind of uh, glid through the middle of the ice and opened his skates up to allow more of a shooting lane, and that one just whizzed right by the blocker side. Chris Solomon again, scoring the first two here. He's already well on his way oh, yeah. to matching the goal total he had in his first game against Duke there in that 14-1 to win. The Pirates are doing a great job here so far in matching them tip for tap, though. Frosch takes it back. Passes it up ahead. On a breakaway. Oh, what a stop by Ian Hutchinson. Ian Hutchinson sacrificing his body there on that one. Making the stop, just playing physical, getting in the way of the shot. Nothing yes. doing there. It looks like... Yeah, that chance all created with a, uh, with a pretty sloppy turnover in the neutral zone and allowed ECU to make a quick rush out of it. But really good job in that to stand strong on that breakaway. And this game has been a battle of momentum so far. Will, what have you seen out of these two teams when they get the momentum to swing in their favor? Well, it, it looks like whenever ECU gets their momentum to swing in their favor a little bit, especially whenever they had they were five against three right there on the power play, it, they were definitely taking advantage and trying to spread them. But I think the ECU's main thing is to just run down the field and hit it. But Pac likes to play around with it and tries to spread open, create some holes. But ECU is doing a really good job with their defense and crowding around that goal to create less of a uh, shot range for them. Matt Miller brings that one all the way up, takes a big hit there on that one. I believe that one is going to be called. Yeah, he's going to be sent off for interference, and the Ice Pack will have another opportunity on the power play to increase this lead. I believe yeah. that's Justin Hess going to the box for Just, ECU. Justin Hess going to the box again. I believe this is his second trip there already in this game. ECU's defense Ooh. has done a great job physically. Looks like Correction, I'm sorry. That would be Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs being sent off for the first time in this one. That's going to be two minutes in the penalty box. Again, we already saw the ice pack in this one. Scoring early, Chris Solomon on that power play, getting the first one to go, giving them that early lead. But the Pirates match them quickly. This game has been very back and forth so far as we've got three goals scored in the first ten minutes. What ECU does good about on these power plays, they keep their men back playing pretty much all defense except for sending one up. And in this case, they have Tyler Cromenhawk sending up forward just to be able to put pressure on that pack defense to be able to push the puck around. And here we have a... Yeah, the refs are signaling for that puck to have been batted down with a high stick, so the faceoff will come back into the NC State zone. Okay. Tyler Cromenhawk is going to be taking this one off against Parker Zarek. Parker Zarek tips that one ahead but is collected by ECU. Thomas Bruning just taking that one, managing to collect it, and they're trying to make something happen here. Ice Pack collecting, trying to slow it down a little bit. The Pirates came out with a passion, trying to get a quick goal. Alex Robinson, I believe, takes that one behind the net, chips that one ahead to Ian O'Rourke. Ian O'Rourke has space, trying to make something happen, looking for someone across the middle, checks it, but it's caught by the ECU Pirates defense. Kept in play by Devin Halco, though, who manages to keep it in the Pirates' side. That was a good stop there by Devin Halco keep that back into the Pirates. Oh, what do we have here? Let's see. Caught up on the caught up behind the net there. Ooh, Both teams trying to poke it play. away. Ice Pack are going to come away with it. Ian O'Rourke again with the puck. Ian O'Rourke just has a good speed down the side. Very much so. He's proven to be a veteran leader. Of course, the club He's president. And that one is caught wow. by Graham Emmett. A slap shot by Alex Robinson. But Emmett was just in the right place at the right time. He manages to catch one that right, right there. That one hit him straight in the mask. That catch. Emmett has played very well here, only giving up those two goals. But again, Chris Solomon just sliced through his defense, giving himself an opportunity on those two goals. I think he has nearly around, what, six saves now? Ice pack offense has been shooting, Ooh. and they come right out of the gates there. Nikita Anastradov trying to get that one in quickly, but able, unable to get it. Kamazakowski passes it across, and that one is just lost there by Victor Hugo. 
time turn it down in this power play for Pack. Trying to collect that one back there as Cam Mazakowski, as he tries to swing everyone back around, passing that one ahead. Coming up, trying to find an opportunity. Passing that one back to the point. Cam Mazakowski again crosses it to the middle, and that one's just poked away by the Pirates. EC yeah. looks like they're about to have a chance here. Two on one rush if they can get another man deep. That would have been Chris Solomon in the middle there with another strike. Solomon's got a head of speed right now. He's cruising through center ice. He drops one off to Jahala. Jahala on the left wing. Does a power move to the inside. That one's turned away on the rebound, though, funneling behind the net. And now it's Hulk, or Hugo on the point working one down. Lace Jadala tried to chip that one in, but just wasn't able to get anything going. Solomon again on the follow-up. Just skipped that one a little bit too high. And they're going to have another shot here. The Ice Pack have been applying the pressure here as that one goes out of play. And there comes back on the player, and the power play is over. But the Pirates have done a good job with those kills so far, giving up that one goal to Chris Solomon on that first one. But since then, they've been perfect on the power play. Yeah, much better effort by ECU defensively on that power play. You know, it's, it's, it's good to see that they're changing up their play style because last year you saw that they were not very good on their power plays. No, they, they struggled on their own power plays and the penalty, penalty kill especially, they suffered defensively. As that one's taken by Eric Todd, Todd just unable to get that one to go. Tripped up there by number 28, Thomas Bruning of the Pirates. Thomas Bruning also being a returning player, played last year 18 games. That one's chipped out in space. Taken away there. Really good pressure right now by the ice pack. ECU hasn't been able to get it, work it out of their zone for any real pressure in quite some time now. ECU has an opportunity here as they skip it ahead. He's just unable to catch up with it as Bathgate just takes that one away. Skip back ahead. Eric Todd again with the puck, unable to get anything going. ECU is going to collect this one easily behind their net as they try to circle the wagons. That one right there, that, that play from the pack was just really chippy there. I did not see the puck really hit the ground, but maybe twice. Trying to chip that one ahead quickly. The pack work their best magic when they're out in space, trying to get those easy goals. They've got a lot of potent offense on this team. Here we go with some room in the middle right here. Let's see what he does. And oh, good defensive stop by the Pirates there. They were just in the correct position. See, here's what I'm talking about right here is when the Pirates just crowd up this net. Yeah, we're going to get another penalty here again with uh, finishing up high with the elbow. The area emphasis once again coming in. So it looks like Ice Pack are going to have another opportunity on this power play. That's Mason McCannon going to the box for ECU. The Pirates can't afford to give too many opportunities to this Ice Pack team. Again, the Ice Pack last season were absolutely deadly on the power play. And they look to do so again here. One for two so far in this game. It looks like ECU is bringing back in their real defensive squad here on these power plays. Yeah, NC State's going to go with a different unit this time on the power play, starting out with Bathgate on the back. Haven't seen a lot of Bathgate so far. This is his first season on the ice pack. Done a good job so far trying to squirt that one out ahead, but just unable to get anything going. That one is going to be won by the Pirates. He tries to chip that one out, but Frosh is right there to take it. That one has tried to be passed out to Bathgate, but Bathgate was just not ready for it. As he tries to circle it back around, Matt Miller takes it. Trying to find a seam, skating up ahead, up on the right wing. Taps that one back. Again to Frosh. Oh, excuse me. Frosh now has the puck. Trying to find something open. Make something happen. Matt Miller back to Frosh. Frosh right there with the shot. And a great opportunity for Kenny to tip that one in, just unable to get it. Let's see if he can spread it back to Frosh on the left. Ice Pack have just been applying pressure in this power play, trying to make something happen as Matt Miller Matt has an opportunity, and that one is shrugged strike. off. That was a good save by Emmett, just to tip it over, over, the net, over the net. Seemed to save that one with his shoulder there, just shrugged it off. ECU Pirates' defense has held strong on this penalty kill, just denying everything that the Ice Pack have thrown at them as Matt Miller takes this one up again. Yeah, ECU doing, doing a much better job now, clogging the lanes that were wide open early on those first two power plays. That one is taken back ahead. With the puck, now he's gone. Oh, I cannot see who that is in ECU with the puck. That was Ian Macklin. Ian McLean. Taking that one ahead, the Ice Pack have a shot, but again, the great defense from the ECU Pirates just standing in the lane. It looked like Allen Robinson right there on the attack. Taps that one ahead to Halco. Halco tips that back out to the side, and that one Robinson. is going to be tipped ahead by Emmett. Emmett, again, just doing a great job with that glove. 
and flashing the leather and making a bunch of impressive saves. That one passed back out to Halco as he takes a shot. Emmett again. Can we talk about defensive player of the game so far? Emmett has done an absolutely stellar job in net there. This game could be a lot worse for wear for the Pirates if it hadn't been for his goalie play so far. Yeah, Halco's doing a really good job right now walking that puck along the blue line, finding some shooting seams because the, the rebound control is not all there yet. So Ice Pack looking to create some opportunities off the rebound. We have it here, the Ice Pack still on the power play for an additional 13 seconds as Mason McMahon is still in the penalty box for the Pirates. Pirates are going to come up. Ice Pack are going to come up with this one. That one is tipped. Riley Johnson has it. Knocked to his legs. Oh. Unable to get anything going there. The power play is over for the Ice Pack. The Pirates return to full strength as the Ice Pack try to get something to go there. Tipped away by the defense of the Pirates. They take that one ahead. They've got a chance here. Riley Johnson just takes that one off the tip from Parker Zarek. Riley Johnson, Riley Johnson has an opportunity. Alex Robinson. Alex Robinson. Alex Robinson. Alex Robinson just did a fantastic job there, taking the pass and making the goalie miss. He faked Graham Emmett out and did an absolutely fantastic job. A beautiful move there by Robinson. Yeah, really good job. Well executed two on one. And a lot of times you can see people making the unnecessary pass, but really good decision making. And this one finds up in the back of the net. Robinson had been trying to find that opportunity all game long. Hadn't been able to find a crease yet, but right there, taking that one in. The ECU defense has looked absolutely stellar, but every now and then, the, Pir the Pirates are just allowed to be chipped away there. Settling this one back down, Nikita Anastradov tips that one forward, unable to recover it as the Pirates take it away. Ian O'Rourke comes away with it. Puck just lost out there. Devin Halko tips that one ahead. Going to be recovered, settled down by the ECU Pirates. Devin Mizell taking that one, trying to find an open teammate on the other side of the ice. Unable to get anything going there. That one's taken away by the ice pack again. Nikita Anastratov out in space. Tries to take it right down the middle, but shoots that one a little too high as it goes off the net behind the goalie. And again, we can't talk enough about how important Graham Emmett has been to this ECU Pirates effort right now. He's done an excellent job out there at his goalie position. A lot of shots on goal for this Wolfpack team, this Ice Pack team, excuse me. And they just haven't really been able to find the exact way through Emmett. They still lead 3-1 here. That one fought for behind the net. ECU coming away with it, trying to tip it ahead, get it out of the territory but taken away again by Solomon. Pirates taking this one back ahead. They have an opportunity. Need to use their speed to get out in space. Unable to track that one down. Solomon tips that one ahead, trying to find Leif Jadala, but that one is taken away by Mason McMahon. Mason McMahon's been busy out there. He's been open in space and making a lot of good defensive breakups. That one taken away again. Solomon coming up ahead, passing it to Jadala. Jadala just puts it in the corner for himself to recollect. Finds Solomon again. Solomon takes it to the middle, but takes a hard hit there. Wow. Cam Mazakowski has the puck. Shoots it there. Great save by Emmett again. Ice Pack have had a lot of opportunities here, trying to get a shot, but unable to get anything to go. In these last couple minutes, they've had plenty of shots on goal, but Emmett, again, just staying strong out there. That one shot by Halco. Unable to get that one to go. Cam Mazakowski has the puck right now. Yeah, really good sustained pressure here by the ice pack. ECU can't seem to get off in a change, and their boys are looking pretty tired. Around three minutes left in this first period, this opening period out oh. at the ice plex in the first home game of the season for the ice pack. Puck just seeping through the middle. Oh, ECU's, ECU's about to have a chance break. here off the funny puck bounce coming down the left side. Opportunity for Seth Bunch. Good cutback, but too far. Tries oh, to get something to happen, wow, but just overshoots up. his pass there. Unable to get it going. The Pirates retain possession, but the defense of the Ice Pack is taking it away right there. Chipped ahead. Davidson unable to come up with it there. A good opportunity. A hard hit by Bathage. Bathgate, excuse me. Trying to make something happen behind the ECU Pirates net. Around two minutes remaining, the Pirates trying to swing this back in momentum. Trying to find something before this period ends. Cascade now, like, cats in the back. Like, 
Hutchinson lets that one skip off his glove. Taken there. Ice pack have it up ahead. REN has it. Passes it to Miller. Good, good takeaway defense by the Pirates right there as Christopher DePern just takes that one away, pokes it away. ECU looks like they're about to go to the box once again, this time for a high stick. Seth Bunch going to the box. Seth Bunch had that opportunity there, tried to pass it ahead, find a man open in the middle, but just overshot that pass. Unable to find any of his teammates there. That was probably the greatest breakaway I've seen from the Pirates here tonight. And they've had some good ones. Yeah, ECU really shooting themselves in the foot right now, taking four penalties already in this first period, just giving the Ice Pack tons of opportunities to pad this lead. Ice Pack up 3-1 to one with 1 minutes and 51 seconds remaining as they go on the power play yet again for the fourth time in this game. Seth Bunch being sent to the penalty box for the Pirates as they go down yet again. Parker Zarek on the faceoff. Zarek tips that one away. Alex Robinson has it. Robinson scoring that most recent goal. Halco tips that one out. Ian O'Rourke just unable to capitalize there. Great defense by Graham Emmett. O'Rourke with the puck passing outside. Devin Halco comes up with it yet again. Has it through the middle. Great shot, but off the side there. Ice Pack trying to find opportunities here. They can get that last little bit of momentum as that one is shot just a little bit too high by Ian O'Rourke there. Yeah, Ian O'Rourke just rings that one off the bar. Goalie didn't really see that one, but NC State doing a really good job on this power play, utilizing their demon to create shooting lanes. They've done a great job. Their passes have been slick, and they've been finding the open man, getting a lot of shots on goal and recollecting the missed passes. Really important last minute and a half here for ECU not to go down to the dressing room, down three goals. Down three goals can be the entire difference. They can ill afford to give Ice Pack the momentum yet again. Devin Halco has it on the side. Tries to chip that one ahead. That one's going to be shot. Saved by Graham Emmett. Again, Emmett has had a lot of scary situations out there. Been down a defenseman more often than not. Yeah, you can tell he's playing with confidence. He's really attacking all the shooters on these shots, getting outside of his crease, and really taking away a lot of the angles. When he goes to take that puck right out of the air with the glove, you know that he's feeling good about himself. Oh, yeah. You can see the support his team has for him out there. Again, a returner from last season's squad doing a good job here in this game. And that one's just chipped up right there. Riley Johnson just was taking that one slowly in front of the net and manages to flip that one up and in over the shoulder of Graham Emmett. Riley Johnson with the goal. Yeah, ECU doing a really poor job there of identifying their man, letting Johnson walk all the way to the front of the cage and shove one upstairs. Can we talk again? Those power plays just absolutely lethal for the Ice Pack. The penalty kill for the Pirates just has not been there today. They had a good one, but they found themselves down 4-1 to one here and in a sticky situation in the first period as this one comes down to the final minute. Yeah, you can see visible frustration from the ECU players after the last goal, so this game might pick up a little bit in intensity as we carry on. Cam Mazikowski collects that one, tips it out ahead. The Ice Pack aren't done. They're trying to find another goal here. They are hungry right now. Good defense for the Pirates as they take that one away. Trying to push that one up is good catch by Will Riding. Just to stop that right there. Yeah, I got a little extracurriculars right now after the whistle. This is that frustration from, from ECU. Just not able to get, really get anything down at NC State. Boiling that one over is Benjamin Kellerman. Getting into it a little bit with Ian O'Rourke down there right next to the goal. Referees breaking that one up before anything can really happen there. Apologies. Will Riddings. Will Riddings, yes. It looks like Cam Mazikowski will be sent off for that one. Referees may have not, didn't see exactly what happened there. Yeah. Didn't like something that happened down there. Yeah, just scrapping a little bit after the whistle. And I think uh, this is going to be docked for unsportsmanlike or roughing, I think verbally, because it didn't look to be too much of a physical altercation after that last whistle. From what I saw, it looked like Will Riddings was kind of pushing up against Akita down there in the net. I didn't really see anything going on. Regardless, Mazikowski goes to the penalty box here, and the ECU Pirates have an opportunity here, and they will take this into the second period as there's only 46 seconds remaining. Two minutes on the penalty for Mazikowski as he goes to the penalty box. The Pirates have a chance here. Number 16, Justin Hess trying to take that one around. 22 shoots it, unable to get that one through, but the Pirates are continuing to uphold pressure here. Shoots that one in again. Hutchson loses wow. his footing. That could have been dangerous. Hard hit by Halco. Oh, he is They're going to, and it seems like this is going to start something here. They're going to call that one. Referee's breaking that fight up before it can even begin. Devin Halco laid an absolute hit. 
no idea who is on the ground for uh, ECU right now, but he is down. I believe they're going to need a couple trainers right there. Coaching staff coming out to check on him. Devin Halco just laid into that one, sent him flying into the glass. We'll update as soon as we know who the player is who's down for the Pirates right now. Pirates had an opportunity there on the power play, trying to make something happen. Devin Halco just comes soaring in and takes the opportunity away. I could not tell here from the, my angle, but I don't know if that was that clean. I believe the referees are going to call that one there. Had their yeah. hand up as soon as that hit was delivered, making okay. sure that he was safe. He's holding his arm a little bit there. Is number 12, Cam Gross, as he goes away for a little bit. He's going to need a little bit further examination. They also might just be taking him out as a precaution with only 23 seconds left in this first period. Yeah, for NC State, Devin Halco who made that hit, just headed to the locker room, not under, I don't think, the grounds of a penalty, just because only 20 seconds left in the period. 20 seconds left in the period. It looks like that will not be called. Referee having a chat there with the ice pack bench. Yeah, I think these officials can kind of see that tensions are kind of running high right now, so trying to talk to both benches right now and make sure everybody stays cool. Five-minute major there going to be called on Kenny. Or, oh, yeah. excuse me, Devin Halco. So how, yeah, hit. so Halco, five-minute major, so he will be out the remainder of this game and most likely suspended for the next game. A hard hit there, just sent Cam Gross flying into the net, or into the glass there, excuse me, as the ice pack have a substitution taking Halco's place there on the bench. Yeah, Joey Davison will serve the five-minute... Uh, the five-minute penalty for Halco. 23 seconds left in this first period. Pirates Cracker trying to make something right happen. Yeah, if there was ever a chance for ECU to claw their way back in this game, this would be it. Working on a 5-on-3 for a minute and 33 seconds and then about four minutes of power play time additionally after that. That was, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what to say about that one, honestly. Five minutes is going to hurt the team a lot because ECU has been really good on their pushing during this power play. Pirates are going to take this five on three into the second period. Again, only 20 seconds remaining here. The Pirates try to find some way to make this less than a three goal game at the conclusion of this third period. First period, excuse me. Takes the shot. shot. Oh. Unable to get it through. Pirates collecting it. Time winding right down. Five seconds remaining. They're trying to scoot Four. to the front of the net. Unable to find anybody. They're running out of time. Like he's run this yeah, no around. real awareness right here of uh, when the period comes to nope. conclusion. Just kind of skates that one out. And that will do it for the first period. The ice pack, four goals scored. Chris Solomon scoring twice. Alex Robinson scoring another. And Riley Johnson scoring the fourth one. And the Pirates coming away with that first goal. Tying that one up at one. But after that, the ice pack have just looked dominant. Mm -hmm. I think that ice pack are going to continue to dominate as long as ECU can go to the locker room right here, they can kind of figure themselves out. They might be able to come back and play some more of a game and put some points back on the board. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Ice Pack respond being down Devin Halco for the rest of the game because he's a very good T-way defender, providing a lot of support on the back end and also a very good puck-moving defenseman who's been on, on all of the NC State power plays. So we'll see what kind of lineup changes we see after that. Probably a lot more of Bathgate coming in. Especially being one of the bigger and tougher defensive players that Ice Pack has out here. And that will do it for the first period here at the Iceplex for the first game of the season for your Ice Pack. The Ice Pack lead 4-1 to one over the ECU Pirates. At the conclusion of the first period, the Ice Pack lead this one 4-1 to one over the ECU Pirates. What really looked like a, ba a back and forth battle at the beginning of that first period slowly turned into a little bit more in the advantage of the Ice Pack as they took that one. It was tied 1-1 one to one early in that first period, but then they rattled off three quick goals. Will, what did you see that really turned things around for the Ice Pack there? I would definitely say it would be ECU's penalty numbers. I mean, just having people constantly in the box, especially your defensive players, is just kind of killing you, especially whenever you have four and then you have just the goalie. You don't have that extra one to be able to put pressure onto each individual player of the pack. It's, it's hurting them. And as much as those penalties are hurting them, the ECU Pirates defense has really been what's kept them in this game, doing a great job with poke checks and really just keeping the puck away from the net. Graham Emmett especially just playing his heart out out there. What have you seen 
out there from this Pirates defense that's kept them in there? Yeah, they looked much better defensively early on in the game. They didn't really have a, a strong idea of whose man was who defensively, but they seemed to work out more of a, a box formation, parking two down by the goal and then two wingers up by the top. So it'll be interesting to see how ECU moves forward with their power play on this uh, second period, coming out with four minutes of power play time. And again, going into that penalty, a five-minute major on Devin Halco there. What What's going to happen here in this second period? They're coming in with a lot of penalty time. What do the Pirates need to do to take advantage of this and really swing momentum back in their favor? Well, um, I, I don't know if Delvin Halco is going to return as a player. We don't know that yet. We know that um, Davidson is serving his time right now in the box. So what they need to do is they need to kind of capitalize on this and spread the pack out because as soon as you spread the pack out, unfortunately, it does open up a bunch of gaps for them. And ECU is really good at shooting within these gaps, as we saw within their first goal. And the Ice Pack have done a great job on the penalty kill when they have had those penalties so far. What do they need to do to really bunker down here heading into the second period? Uh, it's all about the two defenders staying really strong in front of our goalie. And then pucks are going to have to get out really quickly uh, with a lot of tired bodies. Because on these five on threes, it's really hard to get a change in. So it's going to be really important for this puck to get out to allow new fresh bodies to come on the ice. We will be coming back for this second period. Ice Pack up 4-1 to one over the ECU Pirates. Back to the ice flex. As we prepare for this second period between the NC State Ice Pack and the ECU Pirates. This one has been a tough contest back and forth. The ECU Pirates defense has really been the story of their team here so far. Really unable to hold their own though as the vaunted Ice Pack's offense has just done a spectacular job scoring goals in bunches, especially on those power play. But we come into the second period, two penalties on the Ice Pack. They're down five to three right now. This is a prime opportunity for the Pirates. I think that this is going to be a probably one of the best times that the Pirates have to score just because well, Pack has a player out for five minutes now. Well, technically four minutes, 37 seconds, but the Pirates are going to come back off of this. They're going to know exactly what they did wrong in this first period. They're going to capitalize on it. And they're going to change exactly what they were doing wrong, which would be sending their guys to the box. Yes, ECU's uh, main trouble right now offensively has been finding some degree of sustained pressure. So this five-on-three opportunity will open up a lot of gapping and a lot of spacing and allow ECU's point men to kind of dictate the offense here for the remainder of this power play. And that's something that the Pirates have really just struggled with a little bit. They need to do a better job of getting that open pass, and they need to do a better job of getting that open pass over the middle, getting those prime shooting opportunities. Ian Hutchison hasn't really been tested as much. He slid around a little bit out there, did, never really seemed to find his footing in the crease. His defense really held it down for him, though. Cam Mazakowski and Victor Hugo doing a great job out there on that front line. But really, the depth of the ice pack has come in handy here. Everybody's making a contribution right now. I think the constant influ uh, influx of different defenders and offensive players coming back on defense just to make these great stops is doing really well for the ice pack right now. I mean, I haven't really seen much from Mason, Ian, or Nicholas, which are the three leading goal scorers from ECU coming back other than maybe a couple of plays. Yeah, something that we're going to see a lot more of is uh, Gavin Bathgate playing uh, alongside um, Ian O'Rourke with uh, Devin Halco being out for the remainder of this game. So this is his first real opportunity to prove himself as a member of the Ice Pack this year. Devin Halco again going off for that five-minute major. For that hit he delivered on Cam Gross over in the corner down there. Cam Gross down on the ice for a little bit, but good to see him get up and walk off the ice. Do we predict? Do we predict that he p could possibly return this well, game? You, you know that he definitely wants to come back out there, but with a hit like that, you never really know. Yeah, I think uh, for most of the rulings is uh, match penalties like that that are five-minute majors are game misconducts unless the ACCHL operates under a different set of rules than the NHL. But typically, five-minute majors are matched with uh, misconduct for the remainder of the game and then an assessment post-game if additional supplementary discipline is required. So what does that mean for Delvin Halco going into practices this week and then anything else going on within the season? So typically the player will be allowed to practice with the team, but supplemental discipline could be one or two games. So it's up to the ACCHL and the officiating crew after this game to determine if additional punishment will be handed out to him. As the referees retake the ice, getting those goals set, we see the ice pack coming back out of the locker room, taking their spot on the bench as these teams prepare to face off for the second period. These two teams have a lot at stake here. This is the second game of the season for the Ice Pack. They're looking to keep this momentum going from last season. Ice Pack faithful out here in bunches here today to support their team at the Iceplex. Really good showing out here coming. I mean, I see a bunch of ECU jerseys as well and an ECU shirt. So it's nice to see that these 
these fans are coming up to go watch their team play, especially as their first game of the season. It's their opener. They want to see a lot coming from their team after what record they had last year. And we talk all the time about how hockey is a growing sport, especially in North Carolina. You talk about the checkers, you talk about the hurricanes, but it also comes down to the collegiate level. And we're seeing increased competition there. NC State going to nationals in the ACHA Division Two. The ECU Pirates are really stepping it up here in Division Three. It really is, there's a lot more hockey going on in North Carolina. Yeah, about five, ten years ago, you didn't see a lot of hockey down here, even with the, uh, the travel teams, the USPHL, all these kind of teams down here were traditionally up north, and you had to go a long way to be able to find hockey. But since the Charlotte Checkers organization and the Hurricanes organization have been found here, the kind of grassroots program here in Raleigh and more broadly in North Carolina has sort of taken off. And really, success of North Carolina hockey has also been a key factor. The Hurricanes, again, making the playoffs this past season, and the Checkers winning it all in the AHL. Yeah, with uh, new owner Tom Dundon, he's kind of implemented a new uh, brand of hockey in North Carolina. As you can see with the rink, Hurricanes decorations thrown up everywhere. He's really trying to get a lot of involvement. And with the team making a deep playoff push last year, the momentum and the culture around hockey in Raleigh seems to be changing. Very much so. There's a level of excitement that I haven't really felt here before for the Hurricanes organization and for hockey in general. A lot more hockey fans, especially following that playoff push. And you can really tell right now with how many fans are out here in bunches as the Pirates take their place on the ice there, walking out right now. Ice yeah. Pack have already skated around. They're warmed up. Pirates are making their way out. Yeah, yeah just scanning down the NC State bench, we uh, do not see Devin Hauka out there, so he will be out the remainder of this game. But talking about the boom of... Uh, hockey in North Carolina we did see before pregame there was a you know development of a women's team possibly coming for NC State hockey which is going to be very interesting NC State hockey of course with that women's team really a great a great contribution to this really the culture of hockey it's always fantastic to see that taking place here and to see the level of interest that has already been founded may take a couple of years to get the team up and running and off the ground not as much women's hockey in the south yet but still, it's fantastic to see the grass seeds being laid. Yeah, really good job by the Junior Hurricanes organization to implement girls' teams at all of their A, AA, and AAA levels from yep. their uh, youth programs all the way to their Bantam programs. As these two teams prepare to square off, only three Ice Pack members take the ice. This is a prime opportunity for the ECU Pirates to turn everything around, down 4-1 to one at the start of this second period. 20 minutes of hockey prepared for this second period right now. Ian Hutchinson and both Graham Emmett stretching out before these halves. Let's see how they do. And the Pirates come away with that tip off. A great job by the captain. Nicholas D doing a great job out there. Yeah, ECU looks to lug this puck around side and get some sort of sustained pressure going because that's something we, we had mentioned that all of their chances thus far had sort of come on the rush. The speed right there from Justin Hess down that side could be a problem for the ice pack coming up in this period and next period. Did a great job swinging that one around, trying to find the open opportunity, passing it around. The ice pack defense manages to clear that one out of there, though. 45 seconds remaining on the penalty for Cam Mazakowski as he awaits to try to come back in here. No call there. As the Pirates try to swing that one up and around, Mason McMahon taking that one up, passing it over to Nicholas D, trying to get something going here. For three men, the ice pack Camp defense Gross, has done a great back job. on the back on the uh, the rink, actually starting. Cam Gross, of course, took that hit from Devin Halco, the five-minute major that got him out of the game in this one. Good to see him back on the ice. That was a decent shot there. Not too much from ECU's player, number 16, Justin Hess. Cam Gross circling that one back around, unable to bring that pass in. As they lose possession of that one, Justin Hess just couldn't find it. As he gets the puck back here, he's got a prime opportunity. Pack defense is out a there. Shot. Ian Hutchison just catches that one right away. As the penalty comes to an end, Cam Mazakowski coming right back out of the box. Yeah, really good showing by the ice pack out here to kill off that five on three and turn this back to just a single man advantage. But there is a long way to go. Three minutes still left in this penalty. Ian yeah. Hutchinson just so casually <laughs> catching that puck. Did a great job just reaching out and plucking that one out of the air. Something that we've really come to see from him in these two, past two seasons here on the ice pack. He's done a great job with that glove work. Let's see what ECU can do here. They've been winning majority of these face-offs here today, um, which is not a good look for pack, which means they'll have to, you know, kind of work on that in these next practices. But 
here we go. We could see something coming out of here. That one tipped away by the ice pack, just doing a great job of getting that one out in space. Kenny challenging down there in the corner, Hudson Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer really, managed to clear that one out. Really good job right now by the ice pack four check to keep this puck pinned in deep and will allow ECU to get real no momentum uh, looking on this power play. Number 12, Cam Gross taking that one up there. As we see someone take a spill down in the opposite corner for the Pirates. Pirates trying to keep up the pressure here. It looks like that puck went over and across the blue line. It's yeah. just, good, just good constant pressure here from Kenny and Miller on this uh, Pirates defense just to try to keep that puck alive up in the Pirates side yeah. of the... Devin Mazzell for ECU got that puck kind of hung up in his feet and that created the offsides. Offsides is just another one of the costly penalties. They had an opportunity. They had the momentum there. But again, he just couldn't collect it from around his skates, unable to make something happen there. We're only about two minutes into this second period. But the Ice Pack have done a great job on this penalty kill and killing off those two penalties. They still have two and a half minutes left on that major penalty, though. And that will be Joey Davidson rushing right back in from the box. He's taking that penalty for Devin Halco. And great job clearing that one up ahead there from Alex Katz. Ice Pack still trying to play a little bit of offense here. Definitely not satisfied, just trying to kill the penalty. Mm -hmm. I see, as you can see, Pack defense just kind of cramming in right here, to trying to block off some of the shot range. Christopher DePern has it, passes it back to the corner, back out to DePern. DePern trying to get fancy with the puck there, trying to find an open lane. Gets it across to the middle, but nothing doing there. The defense there from Katz, Katz just posi positioning right the well there. That one glances off the pole there. Offsides waved off there by the referee emphatically. Trying to advance it there. The ECU Pirates have a sustained attack as oh. Hutchinson loses track of the puck. It's lost in a pile now. Giant pile up as the referees will blow that one out. And, and we a have a scuffle down there. Pirates taken down there as they get locked up there. Cats it not letting go. Definitely not taking that one for granted. It, it looks like Cats there was body slammed it's, is what it seemed like. Yeah, as this game has rolled on, it's been getting a little chippier after the whistles. A lot of extracurricular activities going on. I'd be surprised if there weren't uh, matching minors for roughing after this. Mason McMahon getting tangled with Alex Katz there. Both of them looks like they're going to the box. And it will be that. Both players sent off for matching roughing, it seems. Yeah, it looks like we're going to each be uh, giving out matching two-minute penalties. So that will create a four-on-three opportunity, I believe, for ECU for the remainder of their power play. Through these three minutes here, the Ice Pack have not had a full team on the ice. Those penalties have really been coming back to bite them, and they continue to be down a man here as Katz is sent to the box. See, this is at this point right here, this is what can make or break your team right here with the, uh, the lead. With NC State still having four people on the ice, I believe they're going to call these coincidental, so no loss of man for either team, just a two-minute roughings. Still, that creates that five-man team for ECU with that advantage. ECU with the advantage. They haven't been able to do anything with it here in this second period. They've had the momentum. They've had the possession over in the ice pack territory. They just haven't been able to get anything going here so far. As this face-off will be between Nicholas D trying again, believe that one is going to be one there by the ice pack as that one is sent flying down, really just trying to kill this last penalty here. A minute and 20 seconds left on the major. Still, yeah. two, penal two, still two players left in the penalty box. Though. ECU drawing a new strategy on the power play, leaving two wingers all the way down by the ice pack blue line to kind of spread out that defense. Pirates player lost his stick there. A little bit of extracurricular down there, trying to get something there. Hutchinson barely glances that one away, but it looks like the referees will finally call, call something. Out on the action down there in the corner. Cam Mazikowski, I believe, got that call. Mazikowski, one of those hard-nosed defenders down there, definitely took some pointers or two from Ellis Rushford, player who graduated last season from this Ice Pack squad, a key defender, a key loss that Mazikowski's looking to fill. He and Victor Hugo on that top line. Looks like no penalty will be called for that scuffle down there in the corner. They're going to redo this face-off right here. It's going to be sent out. Number 12, Cam Gross will be taking this up against number 16, 
Pack Owen Jurgen. Owen oh, Jurgen chips that one out ahead. Ariane. Decent moves. Trying his hardest down there, facing off against basically the entire Pirates defense. That one is just taken away by Drugan. Chipped all the way ahead. They yeah, will not call icing on that one. Really good effort right now by the ice pack to negate this ECU power play. The threat's been pretty much neutralized. Oh, and a break for ECU here. Good defensive stop. Yeah, really Johnson. good diving sweep check right there to negate that chance. Ice pack defense has done a stellar job out in front of Ian Hutchison. Again, Hutchison hasn't been challenged too much, but he has looked good when he has been challenged, only giving up that one goal earlier in the game. That one taken back by the Pirates right there. They lose that one in the skates. Number 15, Benjamin Kelman, just not able to find that one. Yeah, very fortuitous bounce right there with a very poorly chosen cross-ice pass. That one's back out behind the net. That one's going to be collected by Mazakowski, who just shoots that one up ahead. Jadala kind of just... Flips right over that one. I believe icing is going to be called there on the play. About 15 minutes remaining here in this second period. No penalties left on the clock, but there is still a man in both penalty boxes. Referee's trying to figure everything out down here right now. This ice pack offense has been stellar here so far. Their defense has done a good job killing the penalties, but those penalties certainly have been costly here in the second period. Yeah. I I don't I don't know. It's it's going to be something to see if we can keep five on the field as well as I'm sorry, five on the rink, as well as ECU actually, because they've been struggling with their penalties as well. Yeah, very little of this game has been played five on five hockey, either with one team having a man in the box. Penalties really being the costly story of this game. As Robinson tries to take this one down ahead, gets met by three Pirates defenders who do a great job taking that one away, swiveling that one up, trying to find a lane there, takes a shot. Hutchison just catches that with his glove. A great shot there by Will Rinnings, just unable to get that one past Hutchison as he just flashes the glove yet again. Yeah, very comfortable save there for Hutchinson. Really good for him to start seeing some pucks. His goalies can kind of get cold when they don't face a lot of action. Yeah, you need something to do back there in the net. Exactly, exactly. Defense has been stellar for both teams here so far. The Pirates have done a great job of disrupting any offense the Ice Pack get going, and likewise for the Ice Pack on the Pirates. No scoring yet here in this second period. We already had a plethora of goals in that first period by this time. A little catch and drop right there. Taking that one ahead and just shooting that one in. Solomon. Unable to get that one in, but yeah. a great effort there by Solomon as it looks like we'll have a little bit more of a scuffle. Referees again just getting in the middle of all yeah, that. ECU looks to be about to go another man down. This one I believe for high sticking. That has been an absolute killer for this team so far. As number four, Caleb Downs will go off for the high sticking. Yeah, looking at ECU's penalties thus far in this game, they've uh, for the majority have either been for high sticking or for finishing hits high either with the elbow. So keeping the arms down, the sticks down for ECU is something they definitely need to work on. Still a lot of time here to make that change. About 14 minutes left in this second period. ECU defense is going down a man here as with the Caleb Downs penalty. Two minutes in the penalty box. Yet another power play for the Ice Pack. This is something the Ice Pack hasn't seen recently. They were down nope. for quite a while at the beginning of the second period. Let's see what they can do and if they can capitalize on this, their first power play back in the second period. It's going to be interesting to see how the power play looks without Devin Halko being able to wheel that point for them. Victor Hugo shot. takes that shot, but again, just Emmett deflects that one away. He's done a great job in net. Hasn't really been challenged as much by the ice pack here in this second period, but they're certainly giving him a run for his money right now. Victor Hugo clears that one to the corner. Late Jadala clears that back out to Hugo. Hugo back to Jadala. Jadala across to the middle, but Solomon unable to get that one as that one goes in. Jadala. Looks like Jadala tipped that one in, but Anna Stratov was right there. Didn't really see who will get credit for that one, but both of them involved right next to the puck on that play. Yeah, really good work by the ice pack there to jump on the loose change and catch that one in to extend this lead to 5-1. to one. And again, they just came out on that power play and immediately jumped on that ECU defense. ECU just unable to respond. Pirates find themselves down 5-1. They've got to make a change here. That's all they do is they, they just got to keep playing around this ECU defense. They'll spread. Every defense will eventually. It's just what happens. Just furthering the point on the emphasis of penalties right now for ECU. 
all these penalties are really coming to bite them in the butt after all this with the ice pack being able to capitalize on the majority of these opportunities. Ice pack with the win there in the face off. You see with the puck now in the ice packs half. Let's see if ECU can just get this out of it. I mean, sorry. If NC State can just get this out of their own half right now. Let's see what we can do. Play calm. ECU really putting the pressure on here. Yeah, Eno Rourke lugs this puck out and uh, crosses out the center ice. A little behind the back of Davidson right here as they go into the corner. Davidson is a very skilled player. I, I, I would like to see him get a little bit more looks. I mean, obviously, he was sitting in the box for that five-minute penalty. Um, but I bet he's going to come out strong here. He's going to try his best to get this, get in this action. Something Ian Hutchison has struggled with here today. He's a lit, he's let puck skip away from him off of his glove there. When he hasn't immediately caught it, he's given a lot more opportunities to the Pirates. Yeah, the initial rebound control isn't all there yet, but from that second opportunity, he's able to swallow that one up and get a face off to the left of him. He's obviously done a great job here as his team has a four point lead. The Pirates have put pressure on him, but he has answered whenever he's been called upon. Yeah, that provides a tremendous amount of confidence for the ice pack, being able to know that they have someone really solid between the pipes, allows the forwards and the defense to play a little more freely. As the ice pack try to get this one up ahead. Five on five hockey for the first time in a while as Emmett just takes that one, pushes that away. Pirates trying to find themselves here, get an opportunity, swing the momentum back in their favor. They haven't had the momentum favor in a while. That one is scooped right down by the ice pack. They're continuing to push. I'm really seeing the Pirates just spread wide. I don't see many of their players going through the middle of this. They're trying to get a lot of outside shots. They haven't been crashing down on the middle as much as they potentially could have. So that one is taken there by Kenny, who absolutely lays him out. I will say, granted, it seems like the pack is really taking advantage of the space in the middle that ECU has given to them. Getting a lot of opportunities here, trying to make something happen. The ice pack, half possession of the puck. Shoots that one right across the middle, trying to find Ian O'Rourke. O'Rourke takes a shot. That one's wide. Trying to cross that one across the middle. Another pass across the middle. Right across oh. the middle, just a little bit behind him there. That was Kenny who could have put that one away. Matt Miller trying to pass that one out to Kenny. And that one just skips away yet again. Icing will be waved off. It's a race to the puck for O'Rourke and Nicholas D. O'Rourke, good defense there. Here cries of Wolf Pack. Matt Miller try, just trying to get it out of the pack's half. And O'Rourke with it yet again. Trying to clear it out, but the ECU Pirates are bothering him down there. Just constant pressure from those three frontal ECU players. Ricky Frosch with the puck. Trying to get it ahead to Matt Miller. Frosch takes it again. Yeah, ECU trying to do a, a real emphasis on laying the butter now, but in doing that, they're finding themselves in some very undisciplined situations which are creating these chances for the ice pack. And it looks like Ariane and Frosch just kind of got caught up there a little bit. Looks like offsides will be the call as the referees will have the face off. That's unfortunate because that could have been a really good break for the pack here. It's a good just opportunity with Ariane and Frosch trying to get something happen there, but again, they really just got tangled up with one another, unable to get anything out of it. And then, I mean, that just happens. It's, it's very casual for an offense just to be, or an offensive call just to be a, a mishap, you know, yeah. an accident. As we mentioned before, Bathgate is now working the left D on this pairing with Katz. So taking over for Devin Halko, juggling the defensive pairings a little bit. So it seems like Frosch has been pushed up with O'Rourke. Yeah, we've done some shuffling of the defensive lines right now, and I'm sure shuffling will continue until they find something that is really solid for the remainder of this game and potentially moving forward. Losing Devin Halko. A fixture on that ice pack defense is going to hurt, but they have plenty of players who have stepped up here. ECU trying to match them here, trying to get the momentum as that one's tipped off the shoulder of Emmett. Oh, that one could have been dangerous. Yeah, both goalies seem to have a tough time right now tracking the puck after the initial stop. ECU defense doing their best to protect Emmett. Oh, Rourke has that one. Bar oh, pardon me, shot. Parker Sarek. And that Parker is a Sarek goal. gets Parker that one Sarek. in. Yeah, really good patience there by Zarek after the goal to wait out the goaltender and go around him and use the post and slide this one in on the short side. Seeing less of his speed and more of his technicality there, just doing a wonderful job with the puck. Yeah, definitely more, right definitely more of a one-trick pony. He does have the speed, and that's what he's known for, but he's got a great set of hands on him as well, and he's able to tuck that one by and extend this ice pack lead to 6-1. to one. 
It's an unfortunate reason there for ECU's defense kind of to hold back on that play and not press them as much because I feel like if they did, that would not have happened. ECU is looking a little bit fatigued out there. The Ice Pack are in a dangerous position right now. They have the momentum in their favor. Up 6-1, to one, scoring two goals. ECU unable to match them here as we're about 10 minutes through this second period. Both teams just need to kind of put it all out there for this, the remainder of this period and then bring it all back in the, in the third period. Skipped ahead by the Pirates, immediately caught by Ian Hutchison. Again, hasn't been challenged too much down there across the middle. The, the one key thing to look for this season is probably going to be how Ian Hutchinson reacts to one-on-one -on -one situations. And again, that goalie room of Ian Hutchinson, Josh Cannon, and Jess Tart, all of them are capable goalies. As we're seeing from ECU as well, goalie play is something that we've seen a lot of here in this game. Yeah, if this, uh, if this lead continues and this game gets extended out, I wouldn't be surprised to see goal team changes for either team to test the new bodies for the ice pack just to get some confidence in the backup and for ECU maybe to give a little relief for their starting goaltender who's been kind of hung up to dry on several occasions. Josh Cannon, a key member of that ice pack team that went to nationals last year with senior goaltender Joey Hall graduating. He's really going to be asked to step up to the task here. Yeah, especially at Joey Hall's big game against Carolina last year. Nikita Anastratov taking that one up ahead. Just poked away by the defense there. Anastratov visibly frustrated with that one. Emmett just falls on top of it. He kind of lost possession there, but a great job by the defense there. Number 44, Andrew Kirilov did a fantastic job just poking that one away, just giving his goalie barely enough time to fall on top of it. Yeah, finding those little ways where you can just stick your, stick your uh, stick in there and just try to push the puck away just to save it. Lechidala going to be facing off here, representing the ice pack. Skips that one ahead. Anastrato comes out with it. That one just tipped away by the skate of number 14, Hudson Schaefer. Ice pack trying to find something here. Anastrato again with the puck. Loses track of that one a little bit. Pirates taking it away. Number 14, Hudson Schaefer yet again, skipping that one up ahead. Possession of the puck, ECU going ahead quickly. Number 12, Cam Gross trying to take that one in. Body down by Lake Jadala. So see those numbers right here on a partial break thrown to Jahala coming to the back post. Solomon right there in the middle. Can he get it in? Graham Emmett yet again just coming up clutch, making a save in a dangerous situation. We get a little chippy down there over by the goal. Again, a little bit of frustration on both sides. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit more chirping after the whistles right now, and that definitely speaks to the frustration coming out of this ECU side. Pirates frustrated down 5.6 to 1 in the second period. Around eight and a half minutes left in this one. Pirates trying to find some way to disrupt the momentum of the ice pack. They had a prime opportunity down there over by Hutchinson's side, but the ice pack just continued to match them. As we saw earlier in the game, when ECU has their composure, they can be deadly. They can play as a really good team. And their defense has looked good at times. They've stopped a lot of shots from this ice pack team, but they just have been unable to find their groove here. As Eric Todd whiffs on that one, can't seem to connect there. Taken away again on the good defense by Todd. Drugen comes up with that one, tries to pass it around to the back of the net. A great pass across the middle, but unable to get that one past the net. O'Rourke tries to pass that one back. Drugen tips it to the middle, and that one's going to be taken away by the Pirates. Great defensive possession for them. Trying to skip that one out ahead quickly, unable to win that one. No call going to be called on the collision there. That one's lost in the skates. Eric Todd. Taken away, good opportunity for the ice pack. Todd loses it again. Taken away by the Pirates. They have an oh, opportunity here, here. Quickly snuffed out by O'Rourke. Frosch takes that one. Skips it off ahead to Drugen. Drugen passes that one up ahead. Collected by the Pirates. Pirates are trying to move this one around. Get this out of Wolfpack possession. Thomas Burning passes that one back around the net. Tyler. Tyler Kroenek trying to clear that one out, but in a dangerous position. Kenny trying to make something happen there right up against the goal. Yeah, a really good forecheck right now by the ice pack, not allowing ECU to have, have any comfort in their zone and be able to get this puck out and a lot more sustained pressure with the deep pairing for ECU not have been able to make a change in quite some time. While their defensive pressure hasn't necessarily been on defense right now, again, that forecheck coming up strong for them. Yeah, that's a, that's a smart cover right there by the keeper to allow his uh, defenders to get a change going on and some fresh bodies out on the ice. And really, again, Graham Emmett, I would 
reason to say the MVP for this ECU Pirates team so far, giving up those six goals, but he has had an important role in playing. Again, in that first period, looked really good, but he has been slowly chipped away and worn down by this ice pack offense. Tipped up ahead. Collision there on the ice, no call. Cats. Yeah, speaking to the goaltending for ECU, some of those goals are definitely a product of rebound control, but on several occasions he's been hung out to dry, so you can't really put much of any of the blame on him. Both defenses having lapses at moments, but their goalie's bailing them out. Katz tips that one away, taken away, pushed up by the ice pack. Really good diving play on a partial break, and looks to be a penalty that's going to be called. Yeah, we're yep. going to see ECU go down a man. Two minutes for hooking, which on all costs negated that breakaway from being a really deadly chance. So all in all, not a terrible penalty taken by ECU, but they will find themselves on the, power, on the penalty kill again, which they have not found as a strong suit this evening. Will Riddings, not a fan of that call, nope. but again, just caught up Ariane in that one. Garrett Ariane had an opportunity there, perfect positioning, but again, that, that hooking penalty, some might say that was a little bit worth it right there to prevent the easy goal. I would, I would say the same. EC will be going down a man yet again. Yeah, Parker Zark stepping into the faceoff circle to take this draw as a left-handed centerman is looking to win this one back to Bathgate and set up the umbrella. Zarek wins that one, passes it between his legs to Bathgate. Bathgate just slows it down, tries to take that shot, shot, tipped out ahead. Number 14, Hudson Schaefer again, just getting his stick in the way, managing to disrupt that one. That one's tipped up and into the net. A yeah, really good no-look pass right there to kind of catch the goalie looking on the shot and slide one back door, but just gets chipped out of play. Garrett Emmett again coming up clutch there. Good opportunity. The Ice Packer applying a lot of pressure right now. Pirates just need to match that. They need to get their momentum back on their side going into this third period. About six minutes left in the second period, and it's been all ice pack. Yeah, it's kind of hard for them to gain momentum when they're kind of having to, to strave off all these penalties and not really able to gather any sort of steam and momentum, just being able to have to play on their heels for most of this game. Miss cue right now by Bathgate, kind of passing that puck away, thinking his D-man was going to stay back there with him, and ice pack is going to have to reset. Riley Johnson taking this one up ahead. Trying to find a seam. Ian Parker Zarek in the corner. Matched up against Andrew Kirilov. And that one's right wow. in. Riley, Riley Johnson. Johnson with a shot. Yeah, really good power move right there by Riley Johnson to wheel that net and sling that puck out in front to Robinson for him to chip it upstairs. Really no chance for the keeper on that one. Riley, good, good move on the power play. Riley Johnson again coming up clutch. Winning that Rookie of the Year award for the ACCAHL for a reason, proving it right here. Yeah, we mentioned it time and time again that these penalties are proving to be absolutely costly for ECU. We talked about how that loss of Sam Banashevitz was going to affect this ice pack. His offensive capability is going to be sorely missed. They found ways to make up for it here in the early goings oh, yeah. of this season, scoring 14 points in that first game against Duke. Chris Solomon, a huge part of that. It looks like it's going to be a delayed penalty call on the Pirates yet again. Chris Solomon has actually been very good this game. I mean, you can see his plays within the middle of all pretty much ECU's defenders. I think Still we're actually going to see a high-sticking call right here on Caps, getting kind of caught up behind the play, maybe goaded into some extracurriculars. But nonetheless, he'll be going off for two minutes, and ECU will have a chance to find some sort of sustained pressure and get some sort of momentum with the uh, period winding down with only about five minutes left to go. At some point this game, we will see some five-on-five -five hockey for an extended period of time. <laughs> but right now, that's not going to be the case as Cats will come off there. Let's see if uh, Pack can actually win this face-off right here. It's been very one-sided towards ECU in the face-off. Yeah, things are not going for ECU, just winning that face-off too cleanly and creating a chance for the ice pack on the end of the ice. Eric Todd did a great job just pushing that one out ahead and taking the opportunity himself. Great job there by the ECU defender, kind of breaking that up with Eric Todd. Wow. What a stick, but. Ricochet of a hit there by Jeez. Justin Hess. Just laid out Eric Todd. Really Todd good blocker save there by Ian Hutchinson. And Ice Packer able to get that puck out and get a partial change going on. And again, trying to use that depth as much to their advantage as possible. They've managed to keep everybody fresh out there at times, but. After extended periods of penalties, you can definitely see that start to take a toll as that one ricochets off of the net. We're going to have that one yet again. 
face off here in the middle. Yeah, about 40 seconds into this play, and ECU still hasn't been able to set up their offense, and they've kind of been reeling back and forth with the ice pack, having a lot of chances to get this puck out deep. The Pirates have been trying to find a way to get this momentum back on their side. Power play would be the way to do it right here. They have an opportunity with Alex Katz over on the penalty bench, but again, the ice pack have just done a stellar job of clearing that one out and keeping the Pirates from getting any sustained momentum. You see you really moving the puck now, just trying to push it through the pack defense as quickly as they can within this power play. Mason McMahon trying to take that one up himself, taken away by number 22, Christopher DeFerno. You know, I haven't really seen much of Ian McClinton so far this period at all. I've seen more of uh, Mason McCann. Seeing a lot of these Pirates trying to find whatever lines work for them, trying to get any momentum, switching out constantly, using that one man up. They have an opportunity here, two on one, and that the one's shot. going to be saved by Ian Hutchison. Wow. A great shot, a good opportunity for the Pirates there, but unable to convert. That's really been their death knell here today. They just can't get those shots to goal, shots to go in the goal on those opportunities. You said it. You couldn't have said it any better. Number ten, Ian McClendon trying to take that one up, unable to take that one all the way through, and that one is probably going to be it for the penalty kill. Ice Pack have an opportunity here. Miller shakes his man off and forces the wow. goalie back into the net but unable to collect it to get the shot off. What an opportunity for Matt Miller there. Yeah, that play is going to be blown dead with uh, the net coming off its moorings, so we'll see a face-off in the ECU zone. Really good breakout pass, though, for the ice pad, creating a sudden offensive chance. Graham Emmett just seemed to back up into that one, trying to delay whatever Matt Miller was doing. He managed to succeed as Matt Miller tripped up over himself, but again, with that coming off the mooring, it's going to be a face-off. It does disrupt the momentum for this Ice Pack team, though, and gives the Pirates another opportunity to get back out on top. Yeah, back to full strength right now. Good, another good penalty kill by the Ice Pack. Their work on penalties has been the reason for this lead here today. Their power play and penalty kills have just been stellar. The Pirates have suffered, and that's really the reason they've fallen behind in this game. I was going to be tipped off there. A shot opportunity. NC For Solomon there, but just nothing doing. NC State really being able to feed off of this penalty kill momentum. They seem to have an extra gear that ECU really just does not have right now. As once again, we have another face-off in the ECU zone. The Pirates just have been unable to clear it out, really. And that's something the Ice Pack have really done a good job of, keeping it out of their zone. And whenever it does come down there, clearing it out quickly, making Ian Hutchison worry a little bit less. That one's going to be taken by Solomon. Solomon with the nifty skates, just trying to get through. Passing that oh, one pass. across the middle, but that one's going to be taken away by the Pirates' defense. Anastradov trying to take that one up. Again, recovered by Solomon. Solomon looking great Good out play there. In the middle. Anastradov tries to shoot that one Good through. Good catch by Emmett. Yeah, one of the real strengths of Solomon's game that we've been able to pick up on tonight is his edge work. He's able to open his hips and use his outer blades and create a lot of opportunities for NC State just sliding that puck over for a one-timer and another good save. Just nothing doing for the Pirates right now. The momentum is fully in the Ice Pack's favor. They've just got to find a way to get this going. They've got to get a spark to their offense. Someone needs to step up, get them a goal right here. The question is, is who can do that for the Pirates? Exactly, and they're hoping to find that out right here with about two and a half minutes left here in this second period. The Ice Pack have just been pressuring them down on their own end here. Yeah, it seems like the only problem here for ECU is that once they have some person shoot, you know, they don't have anybody to follow up. And that one just a tad bit high there from Nicholas D. Trying to get that one up into the net, but again, found the net, just the incorrect one <laughs> around the rink. Yeah, just get over that one just a little bit more. Not, not too much lift. Just caught that one a little bit too high there. Again, Hutchison has been tested a little bit here, but this second period, he really hasn't allowed anything at all. Takes a look back at his goal as we have the preparations for the face-off here. Parker Zarek taking that one, winning that face-off. Rourke passes that one up. Finds Riley Johnson. Riley Johnson with an opportunity here. Passes that across the middle, and that one's stopped by Good Graham stop. Emmett yet again. Again, were it not for his goalie play, this would be a much worse off game. O'Rourke loses control of that one. That's an opportunity for the Pirates. 
trying to take that one up was Mason McMahon, but he lost possession of it there. Again, the stellar defense. Ian O'Rourke racing back, trying to make up for that miss. Ian O'Rourke is really playing well right now in the second period. The club president trying to make his mark on this team more than he already has. Takes an opportunity there. Alex Robinson with the shot. Really good side stuff right now to keep the momentum going. Frost here on the left point. That one's going to be tipped out again. Great defense from the Pirates. Frosch going to have to recollect this one, try to find somebody. Taps that one back, but that one's going to be just chipped up. Ice Pack still have full control. Three on three right here. Robinson just with a nifty move wow. pulls that puck inside. Unable to get that one to go, though, off the pad of Emmett. Emmett doing a great job out there. Again, Park Zarek with the ricochet, unable to get that one to go. Yeah, really good toe drag right there by Robinson to create more of a shooting lane and get that defender stick out of his way. Alex Robinson again. Riley Johnson with possession just loses that one off of his own skate. Pirates trying to move this one up ahead, but they haven't been able to clear it here today. Riley Johnson continuing to push that one up. Katz keeps that one in. Johnson fighting in the corner there with Christopher DePern. Tough down there in the corner. Uh, nobody able to find the puck. Just under a minute, 40 seconds with a here. high stick, it seemed like. Riley oh. Johnson just takes a shot, lost his stick, and decided to play defense with his body instead. Yeah, Riley Johnson able to dump him right there, and ECU is about to go and take another penalty, just a lack of discipline yep. again by these ECU Pirates. It looks like that call will be... Yeah, this is all a result of Riley Johnson kind of laying the body without his stick there kind of getting under the skin of these ECU Pirates. He sure knows how to do it. He was battling there with Christopher DiPerno, and it seems to be that he just really got under his skin. And it looks like Tyler Kromanek will be sent off here. Still waiting to signal on the referee for exactly what the penalty is being called for. I believe it was a cross-checking there is what the official penalty call will be. Okay. That'll be another two-minute minor here. Penalties have really just killed ECU. And going into this third period right now, it looks like if it continues as such, the ice pack will have the opportunity. Yeah, if the ice pack don't convert in this first 30 seconds, they'll have a minute and a half of fresh ice in the third period to continue this power play. They've again, have plenty of opportunities. The Pirates' penalties have just absolutely killed them here in this one. Trying to get that momentum back, it's an absolute killer when you commit a costly penalty like that. They've got to find this discipline whenever they go into this locker room after, the, after these 30 seconds. Ice pack trying to take it slow. Bathgate yeah. takes a shot immediately to the Good chest Emmett. of Emmett. Emmett just perfect positioning there. He was right there when he was needed. Yeah, no real threat there. Emmett was able to kind of see that one all the way through. Not a whole lot of traffic in front, but nonetheless, another good save. If you're really wanting to study some goalie footage, I would study Emmett here. Emmett's done a good job. Again, giving up those seven goals is very difficult there. But see, the thing about that is it. NC he State about to go on even more of a power play. Another penalty being called against ah. ECU. Looks like they will not. They'll wave that one off. They'll wave that one off. The penalty coming first. Yeah, we're going to see another cross-checking penalty. That goal being waved off. I think an ECU player may have gotten his stick on it before it was poked into the net. But NC State has a good case to argue that that was not any sort of controlled possession. And there should be another goal on the board. 13 seconds left here in this second period. You saw the goalie come out there, Ian Hutchison, trying to take off out of the ice, but unable to get off. Yeah, you see very frustrated right now. About to have a, it's just about to have a five on three power play for about a minute and 46 seconds. That will be Cam Gross going off yet again. Seen a lot of Cam Gross out there today, both good and bad, a lot of penalties, taking that big hit from Devin Halko in the first period. But this is going to be very costly for the Pirates. They're now down 5-3 to three in a situation that they absolutely cannot be. Down 6, 7-1 with about 10 seconds left in this second period. The Ice Pack looking to try to make something happen in this final moment. Unable to do that. Looks like the Pirates will have defended for just a little bit. They're entering this third period at a significant deficit as that last shot will be saved by Emmett. No time left on the clock. Believe that will be it for this one. And NC State will take a 7-1 to one lead into the locker room, hang out for this third period, and additionally a minute and 32 seconds of 5-on-3 time to start the third. Parker Zarek, Riley Johnson scoring his second goal, and Estrada and Leith Jadala combining there for that one goal. They have just done, that, that period was all ice pack there in essence. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back for the third period after this.
Hey, welcome back, guys. It's Will here, and I'm interviewing Coach Healy. Healy, nice to meet you. So, Coach, with playing four freshman defenders in this uh, second period right here, what is that gonna? What has that been like? You know, I think it's a great opportunity because you know we do have four D freshman D right now rotating through with Halco going out in the first period. Um, it's a great chance for them to get a lot of ice time early in the season because we're going to need them as we go on, um, and it's a good that it's an. End. It's kind of in a no-pressure situation up 7-1, but it is against a team that plays physical and plays hard, and you have to stay on your toes. So it's a real good developmental chance for them. And I, and I love how they're playing. They're, they're, they're stepping up to the chance. Um, they've got some power play time, penalty kill time. It's, it's all good. Yes, sir. And then with the stops from Hutchinson in the net, Ian Hutchinson, how well has he been playing, in your opinion? Um, we've seen a lot from him tonight. I mean, kind of not as much pressure as Emmett in the uh, ECU net. but Well, first off, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Emmett. He's made some brilliant highlight saves. But, you know, Hutch, sometimes as a goalie, and I was a goalie, these games are actually tougher than, say, you know, a 50-shot game because suddenly your offensive zone – pressure and pressure and then a puck comes back on an odd man rush and you have to make a big save and it requires being mentally sharp on your toes tracking well and Hutch is doing all those things so um, really nice job by Hutch tonight especially controlling rebounds and, and being ready for the big saves yes sir and then these three crucial goals coming in uh, in this period what is that going to kind of be an outlook like in this third well I mean it's a we're up 7-1, three goals, you know, it really does in a lot of ways put it away. Um, but it also changes the dynamic in another way. ECU, you know, they have a lot of proud players on that team, and they're still going to come out hard. And the question is, do they come out hard trying to score goals and play hockey, or do they come out hard trying to headhunt? And um, hopefully it's, you know, playing hard hockey, which will keep us on our toes. And, you know, they're a tougher opponent than Duke. And then next week, Richmond will probably be a tougher opponent to ECU then ECU as we go on up to the Liberty Showcase. So each week it's taking a step up in competition, which is which is good. Yes, sir. And I think like getting all these goals is just it's looking great for these players. They're kind of getting that action in, kind of go ahead and putting one in away. But thank you guys for tuning in right now. We'll be back with you in the third period momentarily. Final period of Ice Pack Hockey. The Ice Pack taking on the ECU Pirates for these final 20 minutes. The Ice Pack currently with a lead of 7-2-1. Pirates have had a lot of opportunities, but penalties have really just killed any momentum they've been able to build as these two teams prepare to take the ice for this final period, unless we see a major comeback from the Pirates. Still well within the realm of possibility, but entering here with two penalties really just been the, the story of the match here. <laughs> yeah. I, Oh, sorry. Oh, NC ahead, State seems to have a chokehold in this game right now. Already up six goals, and for the first two minutes of this third period, they'll have a five on three for a minute 30, and then for a minute 47, a five on four if that five on three does not convert. But this is just another good chance for NC State to fundamentally work on their power play and even get more players involved. Like we said with the uh, intermission uh, interview with Coach, yeah. that four freshman defenders are starting in the absence of Devin Halco. So this is a really good opportunity for them to find their footing. And they've done really well out there when given the opportunity. They've more than held their own. Again, no goals scored since the four of them have really been out there. They've been doing their job very well. And that front pair in Cam Mazakowski and Victor Hugo have done a fantastic job out there. Yeah, he pretty much said what I was going to cover with the whole four, four freshman <laughs> defenders coming in. I yep. mean, it's... It's something outstanding to see that you can have these new guys come in and play. That's astonishing. I mean, you know, in, in any situation. And again, losing a lot of those veteran players like they did this last season, a lot of veteran leadership in this locker room that graduated or moved away. Stuff like that, it's really good to see it when a young player can come up immediately and take up the mantle and really just continue where they left off this team had a dominant run last season. They're really starting to look like that team again here this season. ECU, though, they've had their moments. They've really just failed to capitalize on those opportunities they've given themselves, and they've really just been shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of brand of hockey ECU presents to the ice pack in this third period, if it's like a prideful, hard-nosed game or if things start to get even chippier like we saw towards the end of that second period. It's going to be interesting to see how ECU starts out here with being two down in a 5-3 to three situation here. Again, the Ice Pack have the advantage 5-3 to three as they look to push this one up ahead. They're going to kind of just bring this one back a little bit as we see Eric Todd receive the pass, trying to bring this one up, looking for someone across the middle, find somebody, misses that pass, but the slap shot over there by Eric Todd, unable to get that one to go. Mazakowski collecting it there. Todd again Todd takes that shot, shot, 
but again, the defense just getting in his way. Good defense there from the three men for the Pirates. Yeah, really good blocks right there by EC defenders, showing a lot of pride left in this game that they are willing to sacrifice the body for their team and for their goalie. They've definitely shown their hardiness here today. They haven't given up despite the deficit. They've played a hard-nosed game here today, and they've done a great job at certain times. They just haven't been able to connect enough good plays here together. They really need to just take advantage of this time and go ahead and get those quick substitutions in while they're being two down. Just keep feeding these defenders in. Yeah, NC State working an umbrella offense right now with just one demon at the point, sort of spacing out the three ECU defenders and making those weak areas even weaker. Hugo taking this one around, trying to find an open seam. Passes that one out to Mazakowski. Eric Todd takes the shot, and that one's off the bar. An exceptional shot. Todd's past three, sh past three shots have actually been really good. Even though they have not really went in and that one hit the post, um, still good accuracy. Graham Emmett did an exceptional job stretching for that one there. Todd almost managing to slip that one through, but just unable to come away with it. Todd again with the puck. Finds Davidson across the middle, unable to get that shot to go. Unable to collect there. Again, what rebound control has been the story of the goalies here today. Again, good job by the defense of collecting that one. As they have dribbled out this penalty, really, they've done a good job just keeping the offense of the ice pack at bay. Tyler Kromanoff back on. The ECU, ECU successfully fended off that five-on-three chance by the ice pack, which is some momentum that they hopefully will be able to use and carry for the remainder of this game. Victor Hugo trying to make something happen right there. Looks like Cam Gross has also came back on. He is now a 5-5. Five five. Taking that one there is Ian McGlynn. Pirates trying to find a lane. Unable to find it, but it's tipping that one up. And an opportunity here. Number 16 takes that Shot. one and fires. Wow. Hutchinson shrugging away from it, but still doing a good job. Staying in front of it. A good opportunity there again. Ian McGlynn trying to get something there but the defense held strong for the ice pack. Seems like Garrett just spinned himself out right there trying to find that puck. And again, a good opportunity for the ice pack. Two on one here. Three on one is, oh, and tries to take that one save. up. Again. Graham Emmett with a foot save right there, right off the pad. Emmett has looked good in this third period. The ice pack have come out strong, come out firing, taking a lot of shots after that penalty was over. Didn't do a great job on that power play coming into this third period, but a wasted opportunity like that, they still have gotten plenty of chances on offense. Yeah, kind of a sloppy pass right there by Ian O'Rourke, and ECU will have a face-off in the pack zone. Again, back and forth so far this period. The Ice Pack scoring four points to ECU's one in that first period. In that second period, the Ice Pack scoring an additional three goals while ECU didn't manage to find the net in that second period. This third period is ECU's last chance. They've really got to make something happen here, and they've got to get momentum in their favor. As that one almost goes in right there, wow. Hutchinson just reacting perfectly. Good there. job by him of maintaining where that puck was. Yeah. Matt Miller taking that one up, trying to find the lane, taken away, poked away by the defense. Hudson Schaefer just did a great job poking that one away. Nobody there to collect. That one's going to be brought back by the ice pack yet again. The Pirates just doing nothing. No call on that one. Yeah, that looked like a clean hit right there. Bring it up here is Katz. Katz trying to find a lane, doing a great job with his skate work, trying to keep that one in. Did a great job managing to use the back of his stick, pushing that one ahead and behind the net. The Pirates collect it. It's taken away by Parker Zark. Unable to... the shot. Good job there by Parker Zark, getting an opportunity there. Unable to really get anything off of that, but he had a perfect shot opportunity. Again, Graham Emmett just doing a wonderful job out there. Yeah, a really good job by Parker out there to use his hand-eye coordination and seemingly create something out of nothing, which speaks to sort of intangible skills that he has beyond his skating ability. And that's something that we've seen a lot of, out of him today, that intangible ability. Again, the technique when he scored that one goal earlier in the game. He's done a fantastic job out there. He's always seemed to be present, and he's been using his speed to his advantage. Face off here between Parker Zarek and Devin Mizell. Ice pack come away with it here. Alex Robinson, one goal already in this game, trying to take it through the defense, slicing through the four. Pass back across the middle to Zarek. Zarek, Zarek again with the puck. Pass it out to Mazakowski, who can't corral it. Trying to find something to go off of here. Nothing doing for the ice pack. 
Still have plenty of opportunities here. Graham, Emmett, just again denying the ice pack. Wow. Mazakowski tips that one out. Managing to collect that one. Hard hit. Clean hit, but Riley Johnson tripped up in front of the net. No call on that one. Looks like there will be a delayed call. Riley Johnson just got tripped up by the ECU defender on that one. You saw their legs kind of collide and tangle there. And it looks like that will be another two-minute minor for these Pirates. Yeah, another hooking penalty taken by ECU. But that one, very good at preventing a grade A scoring a chance. But ECU will have to rely on their penalty kill, which has not proven to be anything that is worth relying on this far this game. I will say that probably was another really smart hooking call right there just to break up that uh, that breakaway. Seth Bunch again with the hooking call. Preventing the goal, but again, another costly penalty for these Pirates. They just haven't been able to contain their penalties as that shot will go wide left. A good opportunity there for this ice pack. Hugo trying to take that shot, but just unable to convert. Yeah, really good stick save there by the keeper to put his paddle on that one. Slap shot by Solomon. Solomon trying to get that one through. Unable to find it. It seems to me that uh, Graham Emmett is really good at closing down with his legs. Uh, I mean, the upper half, as we saw Riley Johnson just sliding it over his shoulder earlier on in the second period. But Great opportunity there for the ice pack. Leith Jadala fed a perfect pass from Ryan Kinney there. Excuse me, Chris Solomon but just unable to convert there as that one was just snatched out of the air by Graham Emmett. Actually, that one, uh, I believe, is going to be, when I think I believe it went in the back of the net right there, and that will be another one tacked on for the ice really? pack. Oh, it looks like that one did, in fact, go in. My apologies. Wow. Not a lot of reaction out of that one. Well, they, they did not change it on the scoreboard yet, however, so I'm wondering. There seems to be some sort of delay on the scoreboard, getting that penalty off and that additional goal tacked on. But right now it would be 8-1 to one on the ice pack, and there it is, yep. put up on the scoreboard. That was also a good save right there by Emmett. Graham Emmett playing a really good game. It was a fair attempt there, but again, just hung out to dry by his defense. A perfect positioning play for the ice pack there. When they get in that close, there's very little that can be done about it. I will say he does need to sit down with his defense and talk to them specifically about closing down these gaps that they're just giving up right now in this third period. As the Pirates have gotten more flustered there, communication has stalled a little bit out there as the ice pack continue to take it. Again, Davidson trying to take that one up. Good physical defense by the Pirates. Davidson collects the opportunistic pass, tries to flip that one up and in, but again, a little too wide left. Unable to convert on that one. That one's going to be recalled by Kenny. Oh. That one slapped off. Wow. Lucky that one didn't ricochet in. Pass back out to Mazakowski. Intercepted. There. Mazakowski, good to break that, that tackle up. Right Mason there. McMahon did a great job there, just reaching out his stick and finding the opportunity as we see him try to get the puck r back right here in the corner. Lake Jadala getting credit for that yeah. goal. A little bit of a breakup, and ECU comes out with the puck right there, but quickly broken up by the pack defense. Pack defense trying to find a little bit more momentum. Already up 8-1. to one. They could... You know they would absolutely love a to delayed get delayed call right there. Here. Looks like referees will be ceasing play on this one. Let's see what that was called for. Looks like nobody will be sent off on that play. That was going to be knocked back to the Pirates. Pirates trying to corral it, trying to find some sort of opportunity here as they skip that one ahead off the boards. Great pass, but intercepted by the ice pack. Oh, Rourke lays a man out with his skate, but did a great job there. Unable to convert, but a perfect pass across the middle from Matt Miller. Matt Miller takes the shot, passes it to oh. the middle, feeds it through. Unable to get anything going, though. Great defensive possession for these Pirates. Yeah, you'd like to see Miller put that one on net there. He tried to make the extra pass across the crease, and it got broken up. Have, ha have him having that chance again. I believe he tried to shoot that one on goal. As important as those playmakers are, definitely a perfect opportunity for him, passing it up in favor of trying to feed it to one of the many goal scorers on this team. Matt Miller and Ryan Kenny are a great duo with passing right here. I mean, you can just see it. You've seen it all night. Matt Miller just feeding Kenny, Kenny feeding Miller. This team has had a lot of chemistry. Both sides obviously have a lot of love and respect for each other. These teams, they know each other very well, and a lot of these teams have a lot of returners trying to build a sort of consistency to their programs. And I will say pass across the middle. Intercepted there. Shot off of the gloves. Emmett, right. and he oh. reaches out. Miller unable to get that one through. 
had a perfect opportunity as Emmett stretched out. Good defense there. That one's tipped back out. And back to the middle. Frosch trying to find something to happen there. That one's off of the glass. Back out to Frosch who can't corral it. That one's going to have to be brought back by Ian O'Rourke. Bringing that one back. Trying to circle the wagons there. And spun out there is Ariane trying to corral a hard pass from O'Rourke. Back behind the net trying to make something happen there. Good spin around move. O'Rourke is there to corral it. Trying to find the open man for the pass. O'Rourke takes it. A really good job by the ice pack right here with a lot of sustained pressure. ECU not having an opportunity to get a line change and get fresh buys on the ice and the ice pack taking advantage of that. Again, all game they've been chipping away at that ECU defense. This ECU defense looked very good at the beginning of this game, but they've slowly just kind of fallen away to the pressure from this ice pack. Even through penalty kills, the ice pack have always been in their territory trying to get shots on goal and succeeding on eight of them. Score is 8-1 to one here in favor of the Ice Pack over the Pirates with about 12 minutes and 20 seconds here as Graham Emmett falls on top of another one here today. Yeah, despite giving up eight goals, you can see Emmett is sorting to get into a groove right now with all the shots he's facing. It's becoming kind of routine for him on these chances from outside the creases, another, outside the circles. Another goal in the first 10 minutes for the Ice Pack, a theme that they have been continuing from last season. They're Hardy offense just does a great job whenever they can score first and often, as that one was a great spin around move, taken away by Tyler Kroenek, unable to do anything there. Hutchison, again, unable to control the rebound, but good positioning there, making sure he was in space. That one's taken away. And that is ECU putting and that, that in the back of the net. that is a goal by number five, Seth Bunch. Bunch just did, excuse me, I believe that was number 25, Will Writings. Did a great job right there, putting that one in the back of the net. Really just took advantage of Hutchison not yeah. being able to, to collect that one. Yeah, a really good job right there by ECU to sort of jump on a loose puck there and create a turnover, and that one ends up in the back of the net. A really good finish going upstairs over the glove hand. Hutchison has been struggling with bringing those back in and keeping those contained. As much, as much as we say struggling, of course, when your team is up 8-2, to two, yeah. you, his defense has bailed him out on more than one occasion, though. That rebound control has been something that just hasn't been there for either goalie really here tonight. A lot of defensive opportunities, mm -hmm. but neither offense yeah. really able to convert on any of those either. And we have seen more defensive opportunities with the ECU defense with Garrett Graham Emmett sorry, in net. I do want to take a look, however, at how many shots he has had at him tonight. A lot more shots on goal on Graham Emmett. Certainly his defense has given more opportunities to this ice pack than the ice pack defense has granted to these Pirates. Yeah. Pirates trying to make something happen here. 11 minutes remaining here in this final period. Can they get it out of their own half is the question. Pirates now down 8-2 to two following that goal there by Will Writings. Really good toe drag right there by Solomon to create some space, but equally snuffed out by that ECU defense. That one slapped down there by Katz. Katz doing a great job here, filling in on defense again. Halco no longer active in this game. Bathage just kind of lost his footing there. Luckily, Katz was there, and no Pirates were there to take an opportunity. Nikita Anastradov loses possession of that one. Bathage is there, passes that one off immediately. To Nicholas D. Really good two-man game right here by the ice pack to create this chance. He wheels it behind the net. And Estradov takes this one from behind the net, trying to find a man across the middle. Unable to corral that one. He loses Ooh. his footing. A shot. Good shot by Victor Hugo who collected it. Emmett having the wherewithal to keep in mind where the puck was and fall on top of it as soon as it bounced off of him. Again, down 8-2. to two. What more can you do here? A lot, exactly. There's a lot, a lot of time left on the clock. You still got ten minutes, but when you're down six, how does the mindset change for these Pirates? Do you think, Will? I, uh, I really think that they're kind of playing this. Okay, we kind of want to go ahead and start pushing forward, getting this out of our end. Um, that's what they're struggling with right now. I don't see them really focusing on trying to put it in the back of the net at the moment. It's just keeping the Pirates out of their end. Yeah, I think ECU, I mean, sorry, I think ECU can kind of sense that this game has become out of reach to an extent, so they're really playing to find some sort of momentum that they can carry over into the next game. 
I wouldn't say there's a sense of desperation on the team right now, but they're certainly clawing for anything that they can get in these final 10 minutes of this third period. Their season opener right now against the Ice Pack. Yeah, it was a, it's going to be a tough season opener. I mean, ECU plays in Division Three, as we discussed earlier, and PAC plays in Division Two, which is a little bit more um, of an upper level of competition. Um, I do think that the ECU has shown good and bad qualities tonight. Hard hit there. Number 16, Justin Hess, just absolutely laying out Davidson. Joey Davidson didn't even see that one coming. Yeah, as you heard, the fans got really riled up there. Oh, fans can always appreciate a big hit no matter who lays one out. Oh, yeah. That one's going to be called for icing by Graham Emmett, and the referees will grant it. Again, a game that went back and forth for a while and has continued to do so, but the Ice Pack just really taking advantage of opportunities that were given to them through a wide variety of reasons, whether that be the penalties that were throughout this game for the Pirates and the Pirates failing to capitalize on penalties of the Ice Pack. Really just an all-around dominant performance so far for the Ice Pack ever since that second period start. Yeah, statistically a much better effort this period, even though the plays very much dictated by the ice pack, just one-to-one -one in this third period. Look like a scruffle behind the play. Cam Mazakowski getting into it a little bit. Down there on the defensive side, looks like that is Will Ridings. Once again. You gotta learn how to keep it cool. I hate to say it. it looks like he will be sent off fully, or they might just be guiding I him around. I believe that they are tossing him. Will Riding scoring that last goal there for the ECU Pirates, now being sent off with about nine minutes left in this game. Being a player who can put it back in the net, that does not fit well for ECU and what they're trying to get right now. No, any momentum they had is immediately neutralized, losing a man like that. Looks like NC State will also be losing a man for the rest of the game as Cam Marikowski is headed back to the locker room. Cam Mazakowski sent off as well. Cam yeah. Both players kind of antagonizing a little bit down there. Yeah, this is definitely as the, as we kind of spoke to this chippy element that it seems that ECU is kind of focused less on trying to play a well-sounded game and a well-rounded game and is now just kind of looking to headhunt and kind of create problems. You know, what that does not help is that that is one of our other starting defenders tonight after losing Devin Halco. Ice Pack losing Devin Halco are now down two defensemen. That's three players who have been removed from the game as Will Ridings, Devin Halco, and Kevin Mazakowski have all been removed from play with around nine minutes left to go in this third period. Yeah, even more of a chance right now as we heard for those freshman defensemen to kind of step up and make a name for themselves. It seems that they are going to do that tonight if I can say so. So Angus, with this entailing, uh, with two people suspended, two people gone from the pack, one gone from ECU, what can you see now that these defensive freshmen need to really start doing? Well, it's kind of relying on each other. You've got to realize that there's four other guys on the ice with you, and they're going to help you be able to make the right plays and decisions. So being able to rely on your D partner and know that he's kind of with you is going to give you that confidence to be able to make plays. That's a shot on goal there, but Ian Hutchison just, I think, caught that one between his arm and his pads. Manages just to stop that one. A good opportunity there for the Pirates, jettisoning out to that one. As we do have matching penalties, both players sent to the box there, as it looks like Owen Drugan will be serving the penalty for Cam Mazakowski, and we will have Tyler Crowenhack. Yeah, so unlike the earlier coincidentals, this will be four on four instead of five on five hockey for the next minute and 45 seconds. And at this point in the game, there's not a lot of time left in this one. Again, intercepted there by Matt Miller. Matt Miller trying to make something happen. Dodges by. Wow. See, that is the connection right there. Really good work right there by Matt Miller to walk his defender and toe drag around him and slide that puck across the crease for an easy tap-in goal. And that will extend the ice pack lead to 9-2 to two with 8.37 left in the third. Matt Miller just did a fantastic job there. Like you said, that toe drag juking out his defender and managing to fake out the goalie as well. Emmett, again, just having some of those difficulties out there in the net tonight. And there isn't anything really that he could do about that. I mean, Matt Miller's, just his, his swing back and forth, that juking, is it was too quick. 
with the goal of being scored, we still have four and four hockey because of those coincidental minors for next minute 30. And a seven point deficit now for the Pirates. Going to be hard to come back from this one, but you know they won't stop trying. This one taken away by the ice pack. Another opportunity out in space, the speed right there as he takes that one and puts wow. it right in. That would be Garrett Ari. Ari Air just doing a fantastic job there, using his speed to just jet out in front. There was no stopping him like a man possessed. Just did a fantastic job putting that one right back in the net. NC State really blowing ECU out of the water in this third period with just a lot of speed and that extra gear that we mentioned that's able for them to kind of kick it off into a new gear and get all these odd man rushes that are putting the goalie for ECU in a very tough situation. Coming into this one, Graham, coming into this period, Graham Emmett looked like he had done a fantastic job coming into this third one. He looked locked in, but after two quick goals, things have definitely been a struggle here. He's definitely got like a, a, a kind of mood set on him now. Very much so. ECU trying to make something happen here. Very aggressive in their play as he just goes yeah. off of the glass there. This is going to get chippy here. Pirates playing very chippy right now. Ice Pack just trying to clear it out here. Good opportunity there. Just stopped by the defense there as we have another scuffle thrown to the ice. Yeah, another penalty here by ECU, another high hit when the Ice Pack player was looking down at the ground. So just another undisciplined play by ECU. They're clearly frustrated and not really looking out for their team at all, just being very selfish, taking these penalties. Down eight points at this point. They are only extending the game with these penalties. As it looks like Alex Robinson will be chirping on their way to the box, as Robinson will also be sent off alongside Devin Mizell. Both of them just getting a little physical there as they continue to chirp over the box. That'll be some two minutes, I believe, face, right? Yeah, two minutes apiece for this penalty. Extending the amount of time that we will see very few players out there on the ice. It'll continue to be four on four. We have not had much five on five hockey. It is now three on three, actually, because they still have 30 seconds. Still serving. I believe they'll keep four out there for keep each four. side. Okay. Two players in the box, but again, with those matching minors, that they'll just true. keep four on each. My apologies. Again, more penalties added. Now will be the five-minute mark when we have five-on-five five hockey, barring any further penalties. ECU trying to make something happen there. Number 15, Benjamin Kellman doing a great job getting that one out in space, trying to further it ahead, but the ice pack continued to just take it away. Solomon trying to take that one up ahead. Pardon me, Parker Zarek doing a great job getting that one out in space and taking the shot right over the shoulder and over the crossbar, narrowly missing that one as this penalty will come to an end. Both players come back as that one is iced. The Ice Pack have done a great job with possession and puck control, really. Very few sloppy passes. Their passing has been on point. But really what has killed both teams has been the penalties. Whenever either team has the momentum swing in their favor, it's always been the result of a bunch of penalties, really just coming at inopportune times for both teams. Taking that one ahead is Jadala. Jadala takes that one off and right near the right, unable to get that one to go. And Estrada out at the top of the key. That one taken away by the Pirates. They have a fast break opportunity. They're trying to make something happen here. That one will be called off there. Yeah, on that little dipsy do wow. move through the defender's feet. His other player cannot keep his feet on side. So we'll see a face off outside of the ice pack zone. Just doing a little too much knowing the situation of being at the blue line. Six minutes and 43 seconds remaining. The Pirates just doing everything in their realm of possibility. Trying to get another goal to lessen the blow of this one. That one collected by Hugo. Hugo passes that one over. Back to Hugo. Sloppy pass there. Yeah, that, ECU that was... taking that one away. Ian O'Rourke fighting for that one. Nikita Anastradov using his strength, the muscle in there. Great job there. Chris Solomon taking that one away. Passes that one off to Late Jadala. Late Jadala going in there. Pass that one off to Solomon. Solomon whiffs on that one. 
recollect it, but again, a great save by Graham Emmett. For all the difficulties Emmett has faced here tonight, giving up 10 goals, his defense not really doing a great job out in front of him. He has had several good saves like that here tonight. Yeah, Emmett yeah. chucking that puck already to the faceoff circle, frustrated that he's been put in another situation in which he's the last line of defense. While 10 goals have scored, he's also had plenty of saves, a lot of impressive flashes of the leather of his glove. Just picking that one out of the air. Late Jadala trying to find that way through. Passes that one to the corner. Nobody there recollected by the Pirates as that one is tipped up into the air. Taken away by number five, Seth Bunch trying to take that one through. And Nikita Anastradov taking that one up the ice. Tripped up there. Looks like there will be no call as, that, as Graham Emmett falls on that one. And again, the Ice Pack have just kept up this momentum going into this third period, scoring another three goals in this one. When you're ECU, how do you keep from getting down like that and continue to just be down on yourself? Um, I mean, you just have to have some sort of, I don't know how to say it, confidence in yourself to create something out of it. I, I feel like they've lost all confidence. They're, they're kind of just trying to play chippy now. You gotta, you gotta be knowledgeable. You have to have trust in your, your teammates. Like Angus said, you know, trust in your back defensive player to be able to swing that out, get that out of your area of play. That one ricochets right towards Ian Hutchison. Hutchison just tips that one away. Comes out of the goal a little bit there. But Eric Todd takes that one through. He has an opportunity, just slices oh. that one to the middle, but nobody there to, make it, to take advantage of that excellent pass. That one tipped ahead there by the Pirates. Pirates have been clearing it here, but they haven't been able to retain possession. Owen Drugan taking this one here. Slices that one aside to Joey Davidson. Joey Davidson loses possession of that one as the Pirates take that one right back over in the corner here. It'll be Cats up against Cam Gross. Cam Gross yet again active on all facets of the game. Definitely been a player to watch for these Pirates as he's been active on offense and defense, just unable to get anything to go. Eric Todd's pass deflected off of the defender there. Eric Frosch just takes a slap shot from outside. That one just knocked aside by the glove of the defender. Opportunity there in the corner but unable to be converted upon by Ariane. Ariane passes that one back. That one slapped aside. Graham Emmett has looked honed in in these last couple minutes. He's definitely been bunkering down and that defensive side. His defense has to clear that puck away. Four minutes remaining here in this third period. NC State Ice Pack lead 10-2. Yeah, going back to Ian Hutchinson, him going out of his crease to play the puck shows that he has confidence in his puck handling ability of being able to start this rush. Not just in his puck handling ability, but in his defense as well to make up for it. Taking that one aside. Moving it up. Ice pack taking it up very quickly. Good defensive Lose, stop there. Losing control of that one, but that one is poke checked away. Good job by the Pirates. Pirates trying to make something happen. Definitely don't want to go out by a deficit of eight points. That one taken aside by Hudson Schaefer. Ooh, what? Lake Jadala collects this one. That one was a rocket. Excuse of me, Kenny. In the face. Ryan Kenny. This one will be stopped. Yeah, we're going to see another penalty here by ECU. Again, finishing high with the elbows behind the goal, Devin just running him up right under the it. chin. Really just difficult took there. It right to the face. There's nothing you can do about that. You're going to get called for it. Very much so, and especially because the referees are watching for it with how many high penalties. Pirates have had here today. A lot of high sticking calls and a lot of high shots. Yeah, Gavin Bathgate stepping off to the side of the bench right here to get some attention from that high hit that he just received. One of those young players who's really stepped up here in the absence of Mazakowski and Halko, two veteran defenders for this Ice Pack team. These four young players have really been the story of today's match. They've done an excellent job when called upon. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, in this next game they're playing they will do the same as well. I, I have great confidence that they will end up producing and becoming a great set of defenders for Pack, pack her, um, hockey during the time that they're here. Definitely the start of something here. Those four defenders looking to fill in the roles of departed veterans. They've done a wonderful job here as we reach the three minute mark here at the end of this one. And 
Wow. That one narrowly just trickles through the goalie's legs, but is able to be kicked aside into the corner. Ice Pack looking to add another one on in this power play that has been red hot this night. Another penalty, another reckless play by ECU, just trying to bury the head of Tyler Komen Hawk just yeah. sitting there trying. Komen Hawk trying to bury the face of yeah. Ian O'Rourke in the ice there. Just very undisciplined play right there, just given the circumstances. That doesn't say much about your character at all right there. Kerwin Heck continuing to chirp as he's put in the box. Looks like Ian O'Rourke will also be sent to the box on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about that one right there. Uh, I don't know, I didn't see much from Ian O'Rourke. It just seemed like they got tripped up and uh, Komen Hawks was just putting his hand and his, his elbow right into the, the face and the back of the head of O'Rourke. ECU now down two Pirates in the penalty box. Ian O'Rourke taking to the bench for the ice pack. Those miners will cancel out. Yet again, less people on the ice than there should be. <laughs> Don't think we ever really got yeah. to see full five-on-five five hockey out of these two teams here tonight. We've definitely seen more five-on-four or five-on-three hockey than we have. Chris Solomon. Five rocketing that shot through. Unable to get that one to go. Graham Emmett yet again standing in the way of that one. Yeah, just needing one more goal for back-to-back -back hat tricks for Solomon. Solomon's really been looking for that as you can see throughout the second period. He was sitting in the middle a lot during the plays trying to get fed that puck. Victor Hugo taking that one back. Great job. Solomon has another opportunity. They're trying to feed him that one as that one's tipped away again. That one like it went off the shoulder. Graham Emmett tipping that one away just in the nick of time, tipping that one up and away towards the net. We have yet another faceoff in the waning moments of this third period. It's kind of coming down to the end now, I feel like, for the Pirates. They're just waiting on that time to expire. Hugo takes a shot, popped up again by Graham Emmett. Collected out in the back. Victor Hugo tries to take that one. Find Solomon out there in the corner. Tries to chip that one inside to Anastratov. Unable to find him cleanly, though. Again, tipped away by Graham Emmett. Did a great job there. A little bit of a high hit there. Goes uncalled. ECU Pirates excited over that hit over there on the bench. Still definitely a part of this game. They haven't given an inch. Again, just more, at this point, I'd call it senseless. ECU, the ECU there. player trying to kick the NC State Ice Pack player down, but is catching the leg of the official. It's hard to think that he won't be out for the remainder of this game. At this that's, point in the game, it is, at this point, it is just difficult to see. And Stratov, definitely one of those players who will not take any of that, though. I believe both of these guys might get tossed. Yeah, it appears like that will be the case as Anna Stratov skates off. They're going to separate the two to prevent anything further. And Anna Stratov, I mean, Anna Stratov sent off. off. ECU players cheering for Anna Stratov going off. Kind of a low move considering they're down eight goals and have showed no sign of being a somewhat decent hockey team in this third period. And that is Christopher DePern. We've seen, we've seen trouble from him all night, I, I feel like. It's really just gotten chippy in the waning moments of this game. A lot of back and forth between these two teams. A lot of reckless tackles out of these Pirates. At this point in the game, tension's just boiling over. And it looks like he's boiling just walking to the locker room there. A lot of chirping from these fans towards the Pern as he leaves. As the referees try to sort everything out, a minute and 40 still left on the clock in this <laughs> third period that does not want to end. Penalties all around, We've been sitting just here continuing this game. We've been sitting here for about 10 minutes on penalties. A lot of face-offs, a lot of penalties. Some saves by Graham Emmett have really been the last 10 minutes, I would say. You think a lot of dis supplementary discipline might come out of this game for future suspensions with all of the extracurricular activity we've seen during this last period in this whole game. Again, the referees taking their time here, trying to find something to do with the remaining time on this clock. Penalties all around. A lot of ejections here in this game. A lot of, a lot of players waiting in their team locker rooms for the rest of the team to arrive. 
Fans definitely still involved in this one, letting their presence be known. Referees taking their time explaining this to the captains. Ryan Kinney and Ian Malin talking to the referee down there. Looks like the team's talking this over. Kenny having words with the lead official down there. Referee will pull this one over. Teams huddled up down there over on the ECU blue line. As we have this one, believe the referees have finally figured out what to do with these penalties. And we will continue the game here. A game that has featured just a lot of penalties in this one. As that will be a five minute major applied. Oh, change to a two minute minor, excuse me. <laughs> They're on Nikita Anastratov of the ice pack. Yeah, but I believe he's already headed to the locker room. Very much is already headed to the locker room with less than two minutes left in this game. A minute 30 remaining on the clock. A proxy will spend the rest of the time out there as the Ice Pack try to finish this one out. Up eight with just under a minute and a half left remaining in this game. This one's all but over at this point. This one continues to be brought up by the Pirates. Pirates trying to find something to do here in the waning moments. 10 to two with a minute left. Ice Pack have the lead, Leif Jadala yet again Tries to shoot that one, but off of Graham Emmett's arm guards. Yeah, really good blocker save right there, having to match the shooter's speed and come out on his crease to cut off the angle. As we have that pass back up, the ice pack just trying to clear it out at this point. Katz will collect it down in the defensive zone for the ice pack, passes that over to Bathage. That one inter intercepted by the Pirates. Pirates doing a good job of keeping it in the ice pack territory. Trying to make something happen in these final 30 seconds. Tipping that one out ahead. Trying to find an opportunity, unable to find a pass. Good stop there by Andy Hutchinson. Only snared there by Hutchinson with only 18.9 seconds left to play in this third period. Looks like it will come out to be a 10 to two victory for the Ice Pack, barring another score here in the waning seconds. Both teams here looking like they basically just want this one to be over. The Pirates trying to get something here in the final seconds, but they're really just throwing it at the net, hoping something will stick. Pack just trying to get this out of their own area to run down the time. Final 10 seconds here remaining. As Drugan tips that one away, and Hutchinson falls on it with 3.8 seconds remaining. It seems to be that uh, this one's going to come to an end here. At 10 to two, they're gonna let the time run out. And that will do it for us here at the Iceplex, the second game for the Ice Pack, the first game of the year for the ECU Pirates, a tough 10 to two loss to open their season. This was just a hard fought game, both sides. Got very chippy there at the end, but what'd you see out there? NC State gets to build on the momentum that they created with their 14 to one victory over Duke. And ECU is gonna have to do some sort of soul searching after this game being able to, just like all of their players that have been sent off due to penalties, just having to find some sort of way to come together as a team. And Will, what did you think of that game out there? ECU's definitely got a lot to work on as a team, as a, as a whole. Um, you know, just like Angus said, they got a soul surge. And I think the pack is able to build off of the, the kind of down, down plays that they've had tonight, um, especially with the deflections of Hutchinson trying to lock those down and in. An excellent game comes to a conclusion. The Ice Pack continue to roll over this ECU Pirates team. That'll do it for us here. Don't go anywhere. We have interviews and a recap of the game after this. Joined here by Coach Gazillo of the Ice Pack. Coach, a dominant game, winning 10-2 always has to feel good. How do you feel about your offense here today? 
I mean, you got to love the uh, the offensive uh, moving in the puck, uh, controlling the puck in the zone. Um, you know, we're getting shots to the net. We're getting guys to the net. We're doing the little things, you know, that we work on in practice. So uh, very happy, you know, score aside, very happy with the, the way they played. Again, a depleted defense really kind of seemed to take its toll at the end there. But four young players really stepping up to the plate. What do you think they really did well out there and some first game experience out there? Yeah, I mean, they had a lot of composure, I think. You know, we talked about, you know, keeping your head and uh, taking the emotion out of it. And, uh, you know, first home game, you know, and uh, I, I was a little surprised that it weren't as many people. I, I mean, yeah. we still had, you know, several hundred people here, which is yeah. nice. But, um, uh, you know, the, the, the senior guys kind of kept them, you know, dialed in and uh, they just stayed steady in their position. They didn't try to overdo anything. Um, so, I mean, we had uh, four freshmen, I think, playing tonight, yeah. and uh, they did a great job. It was outstanding. And looking ahead, what does this team need to do to keep rolling, keep this momentum going in the regular season? Well, I mean, we just got to – there were a couple of things, believe it or not, that we kind of felt were a little sloppy. Yeah. Um, you know, and that happens. Um, but, it, you know, and, you know, we take note of it and we'll work on it in practice. But I think we just have to really kind of – try to keep our, uh, our foot on the gas a little bit, um, you know, and maybe a little communication. But again, you know, second game, first home game, you know, a lot of new guys. These things are going to take time. But all in all, um, nothing I'm concerned about. Thank you very much for your time, as always, Coach. Thank we'll you. be right back with player interviews after this. Hey, guys, it's Will here. I'm back here with Garrett Arwini and Ian Hutchinson. Uh, so, Garrett, being the last goal scorer today, seeing what you know the offense had on the field, how did y'all connect, and how can y'all you know keep forward going into that the next week's game? Um, I think we kept up great intensity. Uh, we bet forth check, back check. We basically were all at all ends of the arena, and I mean if we keep that up, I I don't see us having a problem next game. Yeah, and with seeing the new guys that are coming on within the defense, you know the four freshmen that started out today. How do you think they played, and how do you think their chemistry will work out going? into you know throughout the rest of the season i think it was great they played great um just to see them like doing great out here they're going to be good for our future <laughs> coming on yeah perfect and then hutchinson man great game in net you know how do you feel so far with going on uh into next week's competition i think we have a great team we got things we got to touch up on but of course i mean it's a work in progress every week it's a new team and i mean you can't look over overlook anyone that at this point true. Yeah, and then a couple of those like slap shots and stuff that you had saved. You know, how do you like want to kind of better yourself or like better the defense and stuff to kind of create and cut down on those like angles that were. Yeah. Well, I think we all got things we got to work on. Um, for me, I think I missed up uh, a little bit of the angling on some of those shots. I mean, the two that went in, they were great shots. That ECU had some great offense today. Um, I think the defense we can generate. You know, a little bit tighter, breaking down their rushes a little bit more, and we'll be great moving forward. That's perfect. And then, you know, on your take on the, the four freshmen coming in defenders, how do you think they're going to be? Fantastic. I mean, it's great for, as he said, the future of the team. And, I mean, we're building every yeah. single season. I mean, after our breakout year last year, we're looking to build on that and build on it next year as well. So. Both of y'all played a great game tonight, and I thank you guys for coming out and letting great. me interview you guys. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is Will Osmond signing off with Pack TV. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Check us out on YouTube and Vimeo.